break, a short break. When we return from the break, we'll have testimonials, Uganda Development Bank's interventions in the region. We'll have testimonies, especially in relation to that. Thereafter, we will get feedback from all of you. We'll take as much feedback as possible, and as many people will be allowed to speak briefly, straight to the point, as much as possible. Thereafter, we'll have a networking lunch. Make sure before you leave here during lunchtime, that's when you build your networks. Talk to people, get their contacts, know who they are, and know what they do. After that lunch, we'll have a consultative breakaway session before we finally wrap up the program for the day. That is how our program is going to run, and that is how we hope to flow during the course of this event. But again, we must remind you that Feel free, when you're making your point, feel free to speak in any of your attacked languages. We will be able to accommodate you, and we'll be able to capture what you're talking about precisely. Yalamanoi, Bapa Isakanin, as we await for some of our colleagues to come in, DJ, give us some soft ballads. Thank you. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank inspiring development where does it come from that thing that makes us Ugandan that thing that makes us different from everybody else where does it grow infinitely where does it come from that thing that makes us Ugandan that thing that makes us different from everybody else where does it grow infinitely? where does it come from that thing that makes us Ugandan that thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank, inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan 
is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank. Inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank. Inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank. Inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank. Inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skills, a nation of ideas and inventions. But what truly makes us Ugandan is our quest to improve the quality of life for Ugandans by creating sustainable jobs, businesses, and improving household incomes. That's what makes us Uganda Development Bank. Uganda Development Bank. Inspiring development. Where does it come from? That thing that makes us Ugandan. That thing that makes us different from everybody else. Where does it grow infinitely? Some say it's in our history, in our culture, and in our hearts, in our warm smiles and vast miles of coffee, dairy farmland, and amazing maize fields. It's in our inherent pursuit to always be better, to never stop growing and glowing. So you see, we are more than just a waving flag. We are a nation of sweat and skill.
Thank you very much. We'll have a prayer. Can we have our religious leader come and lead us with a word of prayer? We can have a volunteer. Mr. Lino Zopio. Let's bow down our heads and we pray. Father God, we want to thank you this morning for this meeting that you've organized. We want to believe you for greater heights for Teso and Karamoja. Lord, this is just the beginning. We want to thank you for Patricia Jangole and for UDB and all the stakeholders that have made this event possible today. Lord, you know that we need to develop this region. Our economy used to be cows, it's now gone. Now we need to invest and bring our people to the money economy. Lord, we thank you. We pray that our deliberations today will go on well, and you'll bless everyone, and you'll give us wisdom and understanding, but above all, we'll live here with better networks. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, let's be seated. Let's give a big round of applause to God who has brought us here today. God is good. And all the time. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jonathan Ekochu. I'm one of the masters of ceremony this morning here. And I'm here together with my sister, Barbara. Please come and say hello and introduce yourself to the Atekero people. I need to learn the language. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Captain Mike Mokola, we are honored that you actually honored our invite. It is so nice to have you here with your people to show that it starts with leadership. All the members of parliament, the local government leaders, it is lovely for Uganda Development Bank to drive such an initiative with leadership 
at the helm. We thank you so much for all your support. Operation Wealth Creation, thank you so much for all the coordination. Everyone, wherever you are in that seat, all protocol observed, especially everyone who came here this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of Uganda Development Bank. We're going to take you through a journey on how we can help Teso Karamoja region be a region that will be talked about beyond Uganda. Huh? And that's what we're looking for. My name is Barbara Kasekende. I shall be your best friend. I must be your best friend. My job is to ensure that I connect your business in the right way so that you can have access to finance. All I do is ensure that you're running your business right so that you can have access to finance. So you'll get to hear today what we do as Uganda Development Bank. I need to recognize some two people. We had trainings in the Eastern region. Who are some of the people who attended our trainings? Can you please stand up? It is so nice to see that we had actually some people that attended some trainings here. And the journey is going to be ongoing. Because ladies and gentlemen, we cannot grow Uganda when we are not growing you. And that's why we are here today. Let's have the discussions together. Let's work together. You can sit down, darling. Let's work together to ensure that we drive Uganda starting with your home. And that is why we are here today, to drive development in your home. And I think for me right now, without a father or two, Jonathan today is my husband for that day. So I'm going to call my husband over, Jonathan. Um, he has to relay some of the things I have said. Sometimes I talk too fast. So Jonathan, I think I'll have you relay. But thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. Let's make this region worthwhile. Let's make this region great. Let's not live here when we have not changed our mindset to develop as a region. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Bapa isi Barbara Akanin. Ebalamu chaltangine be. Ebuniti, ainga disna pia inaka Uganda Development Bank ne. Anwa ine be isikuwa runo ni asota ekeo na kerianut edai subis aneo to maboi sonu oteso nepe kede karamoja. Karamoja nepe kede teso ejasi kede aita poeta nui polo konoi nui kamtoza isubisa kede da kerianut na itunga nepe kede to mokali ya unuoko. Anwa ngun ijia otu nge sesu kere ne to madoke na kus kere ebe iyalo mabunere to ma ibore ne nyaritai Teso Karmoja Business Clinic. Neda ipopo unera omiso nu tetiak, nu aisubisa, kededa aikeona kerianut, anejai ate kerena o teso kede Karmoja. Abungesi todia itunga idis, yuda poro jau nu ostoma itutu onoreta, abu iso negelegela. Apotukeso guoto, abunga anyeja kaiti kena mucha lata diope, aguata, nara ikwesi, apoto jau nu ostoma itutu onoreta, nu ajia sitoma, Aiboisho achie. Konyeji angunda, siyala mingiti ngezi noi noi. Epejo non la ngosi bibla lolo. Flight Captain Mike Mukula. Anwa cha muna bunere, aina kina ngosi bibi toma. Aitapo eta anwa isubisa, aneo teso kere karmoja. Bapa isberone pejo non la ngosi bibi wakanin. Siyala mingiti da noi noi, Soroti University. Anwa bunere, aija utene eke doni. Kere da anwa isipejo ni ane. Siyal miki titi moun kere, Operation Wealth Creation, kere tunga kere, rapote kwa eksakani nepepe, anye nebe, tolo siya napeta nuo, joko noi, oto madoke sa itana. Yalma noi noi, yalma noi noi, without any time to waste, allow me go to the next session of our program. At this juncture, allow me to welcome the chairman LOC1 of this area. Chairman LOC1, Obwi jau ipeji okoto ma aboisi dikon, ido ina njene rikono supana. Yalma noi, chairman LOC1, lwane aloet. Ate kere yoga noi, yala mbera abu neroto mo nabale tianen. Nyara ite sengo kiro rin, okiri John Michael. Kota yanga 
Aisha la mkin MP sulo adolu ne aja kwa Jonathan kada isodo yalama no adolu kada na MP na na pak yalama adolu ne kwa Aisha la mkin Professor nepe kada Captain Mike Mukula yalama adolu so according to boye ya ne na pakina era ina bosi na ina para ne jala jara o wa ya la yara ma ko tesi abono kin yala ma da muno renge si bongo re na tia ne ki da wona ino muno me putitilo inya me sala suban otomo rutin otoma doke na kuskere yala ma no ilu apologu a big round of applause to the chairman LOC1 He's given very brief remarks. He's assured us of guaranteed security and is very happy and excited that such an event is here in his area of jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, today is not just a very special day, but I must say that this is a landmark in the fundamental transformation of Teso and Karamoja region. Bapa Isberoni, Uganda Development Bank, Akan. We want to recognize our leaders from NAPAC in Karamoja. The Honorable Member of Parliament, please stand up and wave to the people of the Atekiri group. Today, like I said, is a very special day. And indeed, the people of Teso have reason to be very thankful to God and to government of Uganda, and especially to the Uganda Development Bank for today's incidents. In that vein, and to be able to make us comfortable and feel welcomed, allow me to invite the Vice Chancellor of Soroti University of Science and Technology, Professor Robert Ikoja Odongo, to make his brief opening remarks before you. Thank you. Hey, I love my guy, you guys, okay, yoga, yoga, very good. You are in the school. In the school, we re-emphasize. Guest of honor, Honorable Captain Mike Mukula, members of parliament present, Mr. Samuel Edemaitum, if you are here, Mr. Henry Magno, Sister Patricia Ojangole, invited state guests from Tesla and Karamoja, members of the press and organizers of this meeting, ladies and gentlemen, my singular honor here is to recognize that you know Soroti now exists. Soroti now exists. <laughs> From a bush of trees to the bush of people. <laughs> Guest of honor, sir, before I say a word of welcome, allow me to recognize members of parliament present and ask them to stand up and wave to the people. <laughs> Guests of honor, these people are very important. When it comes to discussing in parliament how to help this country and how to help Soros specifically, they are the people who talk. If I don't recognize them, there will be a problem. So, Ija from Napak, uh -huh. I have given you a task. Thank you very much, honorable members. I must say this morning that I am the headmaster of this university. You know, there are so many words we use in academics as a vice chancellor. What's a vice chancellor? But to a common person, you have to come to the level 
where we are equal, I am the headmaster of the school. So therefore, I am very privileged to welcome you to this campus today. I am quite certain many of you, especially the invited guests, are coming to this university for the first time. Am I right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Patricia, my sister, thank you for bringing you be this year. I know you did be from the website and, and being stationed only in Kampala. But people from this region did not know or do not know much about UDB. And today is the opportunity for you to tell them what you have for them, what you will do for them. Because the vision for this country is becoming clear every other day. Under the leadership of Museveni, this university will not be here. I want to tell you this. And through the guest of honor, take our regards to see to him that the university needs more things, more buildings, so that I bring people from Atekeri all up to Southern Sudan to come here to do science and technology. We are therefore inspired on behalf of all members of this university for your choice to, to come and give us education, give us hope, give us the direction for the future of our country, particularly in this region. Whenever I travel mostly to Karamoja, I see a lot of hope in tourism. What are we doing to do that? I see a lot of hope in Teso to do what? To do agriculture, fruit growing, and many other things. But we lack mindset, which is attuned to the development of persons, families, and the country at large. So thank you very much for coming to this place. Business uncles and aunties from Karamoja, Eyala Manui for coming. Days are gone where we had zones of no passing either side or this side, you might be filled on the way. We are one people. Ipe. We are one. And we must continue in that line of life so that we develop together. I thank you very much for that. On behalf of the university, therefore, I am thankful that you chose to put aside your other obligations and come to the meeting and also to see yourselves a young and a growing university this is. I must tell you, government is supporting us, but there are so many needs in our country that whatever we do, there is always less money to do it. That's why you find there are a few buildings, but government is working hard to get us there. Our people from Teso region, this is the home of education in our region. We must guard it jealously. It is ours. Feel comfortable and come always whenever there is an opportunity. Even if you are not invited, come. And so long as I'm here, I will say, at least drink some water. That's our culture. So I welcome you. I see brothers from India. Recently, last week, in fact, I had a visitor, Deep Mathur, from Jaipur, and we did a lot of things, and we are going to connect together to drive this university into our house. Even if you are here, if you have something to do, come and do with us. We shall be able to do, to do work together. It is also an honor for us, for the Uganda Development Bank, to finally come to Soroti 50 years since the, its formation by decree 23 of 1972. We are proud of this gesture. Patricia, we are proud about you. Guest of honor, sir, our obligation as a university is to make it easy for government and politicians generally to come and do their work here easily. My role is to make it easy 
for you to come and trust us to have vision. So long as it is not contrary to the expectations of government, you have to toe the line of justice. That's why I'm here. <coughs> Therefore, we will always support you in any way. It is also our feeling this morning and has always been that from this meeting, the bank may consider to have a brand of itself in this compound so that we continue remembering you. <laughs> During the dry season, this place is very hot. And I have a few trees which need some garden chairs. Maybe, Patricia, you may think about it. <laughs> Just, yeah. <coughs> Finally, my role is to welcome you. And I will stop here and allow the rest of the program to proceed as planned. I was informed that the program began at 8, but it is beginning now. And to catch up with the times, I don't want to waste welcoming you all the time, but to say, let the program go ahead as planned. Thank you. Come again. For God bless us. A big round of applause to Professor Ikoja. How lucky am I to speak on the same podium just after a professor of University of Science and Technology. I think I must be very lucky. There is growing concern that we translate brief remarks from the speakers here in Kumam and Ateso so that a majority of our people are able to accommodate this. Mr. Guest of Honor, if you may like, uh, allow that. Professor Ikoja Ngatelme University, Utieko Wachobe, Ene Poyo San, Apiwan Bino Kan, Neno Jamati University, Kede Bino, a program at Chengatini. Professor Ikoja Wachobe, Ene Ngeobe, Ipudi sa mewa noti yeti ni. E yaro miyo wan udo niyang adik ni chel aber pi kop ama kereke di subis. Kede kop ama kereke de business ame mewa noti mo idi akalwa kede ika papat ame mewa noki ye. Ene po ejo me karamoja kera teker dede de pi bino tuni pi bino kan chokereke de wan iko pati yeti ni kana man. Professor Ikojo Pono, Ngatelme Bank, Uganda Development Bank, Pibino Teso, Kede Karamoja, Pikelo Dongo Ipacho, Kelo Dongo Imirewa, Kede Neno Be, Wado Yaro Udogi, Abeber, Yudibut Bank, Alongo Be, Uganda Development Bank. Eyamone Ngaduong Me Bank Be, Amotoko, Dipodli, Ameya Ikanda, Iwe Gimono Kani University, Amo yaro yutu no kede Uganda Development Bank ebe etu no kani university eti mogi moro. Amo roke mi wan komi ni mogo ame idwe oso mo kede idudi at ame yodo idwe iso mi bere. Mama mano bapu no bere kopu go ching. Ajene ngebe lo sapa kuo ngaren konye koto aituba kironi kera uri anut. Ijiwa uto ni kere profesa ne tomo university. Siyala mi kire ngare no kere lwe jasi ne ido e balabe oni kere. Ibusa kinta bu nene nene hape jono kine university lo. Nara hii jono kira ita poeta anwe jokak anwe gangtoza pugan. Kire ni gangtoza shoman. Ibuno ni kire ne nara era ilo ere kire lo ateker na iteso. Anyono South Sudan tonai boisa che nweja situnga linera si angajep na ateker kire. Elipida po mongese ngare no lua Uganda Development Bank ebe. Wanyute ponelo isi natar idio mo kukut. Yeni itu nere Uganda Development Bank aneto mo university. Ati chepak, oina isi hari cholongoi, kwa pikito, ne minata ridu wa sumia, para sanu, mwana la kolong. Ido isi alamu kini ngeso, oni kere bobo, anuwa bunere ne, anuwa moro, akironu. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, allow me to invite my sister Barbara to come and make a maiden introduction, an invitation of the managing director of Uganda Development Bank.
a pesene los que sañara una mucha altana era mucha latano re a peseno teso a pesena ne a teker na de polokiti uganda development bank bringe sa jau napolon otoma pak ne supana yala manoe thank you thank you thank you very very much you know they say if you want to be successful you need a leader that has a vision. Uganda Development Bank would not be what it is today. We would not be here if we didn't have a leader with a vision. See our country, Uganda, transform. It is with great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to invite a woman of valor that has led us to greatness and is leading this country to greatness, Mrs. Patricia Ojangole. Um, our chief guest, Honorable Captain Mike Mukula, Honorable MPs present, the political leadership of Teso and Karamoja subregions, University Vice Chancellor, my board, represented by um, Director Henry Magino here. Colleagues at UDB, I'll ask my colleagues Sam to introduce them later. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for accepting to come to share thoughts with us on how we can work together to economically empower ourselves. This business symposium is not new to us at UDB. We started doing this a few years ago. You recall that when we had just started and then we had uh, the COVID pandemic, and then we could not have physical engagements. But I'm happy to note that these have since resumed. We usually plan to do a minimum of two such symposiums in the country. And I'm happy that we have been able to do one for this region. And I must say that this was planned. When we are out in these symposiums, um, our chief guest, we take time to also understand how better and how best we can be more relevant to the people in the regions where we go. I'll give two examples of outcomes of these symposiums from the Gulu subregion. The first one is a program that you will be listening into, we call Business Accelerator for Successful Entrepreneurship. We call it BESS. And Barbara, my colleague here, is the manager for that program in the bank. We conceived this program because we noted that the issues of access to finance is not only money. Because we used to go and tell people there is money, come and get money. But still, when we tell people come and get money, people would not come. And then we realized that the reason people cannot come to get money is because they are not able to meet the requirements of any formal financial institution or a bank. For example, when you walk to any bank, not only Uganda Development Bank, you will be expected to fulfill a number of requirements, business plans, among others. So we decided that we are not going to be able to address this problem if we do not squarely deal with the demand side challenges of access to credit. And so we put in place that program. So our best program is an outcome of a business clinic like this that we had in the Gulu region. And we had about the same number of people over 1,000. So I'm happy to note that that is a practical outcome. The second one, which will benefit this region, is um, 
our chief guest, you'll be able to, you'll be happy to learn that the bank is partnering with NARO and their institute based in Serere to try and generate seed for oil seeds. We noted this when we were in Gulu sub-region that there was installed capacity of uh, processing of oil seeds, but there was no seed production in the country, and the installed capacity was only about 40 or 30 percent, and there was a gap of 70 percent. So the issue was how do we uh, put to use all that capacity? How can we get seed? And then we're told that seed is only imported, and we're thinking, but with all the scientists that we have in this country, can't we develop, can't we generate that seed? And so from our inquiries, we actually div found out that um, NARO and Serere Institute had developed or were working on something, but they needed to improve some capacity up to the point of multiplying, first of all, determining whether it's the right quality and multiplying that seed, and then we start producing that seed and therefore stop importing seed and make sure that seed is available for everyone to produce. And if we increase productivity of this seed in that context, then these oil mills will be able to um, operate at full capacity. So I'm happy to note that later in the day, we shall actually be signing that partnership where the bank has come in to put its own resources to deal with that critical aspect. Um, finally, before I introduce the bank to you, I just want to convey my appreciation to Honorable Mike for accepting to come at a very short notice. We could not think of anyone better for our region to grace this occasion. And we will be sharing about the bank, unveiling the bank uh, to our people. But in the same vein, we hope to also get your wise counsel and also interact with our people to see how best we can serve them, for it is shared responsibility. Honorable MPs, I'm proud of you. Thank you for coming. Uh, many of your colleagues confirmed, and we are all excited about this, and um, it shows your commitment to serve and empower our people. Soroti University, the VC, thank you for hosting us. We are very, very comfortable. And when I look around, I'm like, wow, this is great. Um, we look forward for better partnerships with universities. We'll be telling you how we partner with universities, even how they also come in to support the best program, for example, because you are based here in the region and there are a couple of things that we can do. Operation Wealth Creation, we started this with Operation Wealth Creation. Thank you very much for the continued partnership and please convey my appreciation to the um, Chief Coordinator. I'll be sending him a note around how this has gone. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, with a very few slides to introduce Uganda Development Bank to you. And then my colleagues will come in to tell you the specific things that we think will be of interest to you and where we think we can be of help. Um, Sam? Okay. UDB is a company. We are owned by government of Uganda 100%, but being a company means that the bank is run by the board and management. Um, I think that is very important to note because it has helped the bank to be run professionally. The bank is owned by government. The key governance arms there is the shareholder who is Ministry of Finance, the board, and management headed by myself. So in our um, board and governance, chart and board governance document, we know where every party stops. There are things which the minister can do and cannot do. There are things which the board can do and cannot do. And there are things which we management can do and cannot do. So if anyone is crossing the other one's path, anyone reminds the other that this is not in your space. <laughs> and that is how we have managed 
to take the bank forward. We have seven board members. They are all independent and non-executive, except one who represents the managing director and myself, who is an executive. So I am also an eye of the board um, with my colleagues at management level. We are audited by the Auditor General because we are um, a government entity. We get funding from the Consolidated Fund. And then we undertake peer reviews just to see whether we are doing good best practices for a national development bank. Ours is a national development bank. It's not like World Bank, which is an African, well, I mean a World Bank, or Africa Development Bank, which is Africa. Ours is Uganda. So ours is Uganda, local content, if I can put it like that. But with the same, you know, kind of um, um, the same view in terms of um, development in the country. So we, we benchmark. Um, we do peer reviews. These are like standards or prudential. The commercial banks that you know are regulated by the central bank, so they tell them do things like this. We are not regulated by the central bank because we do not take deposits. Like you cannot bring cash and put there. We don't do that because we have a different mandate of just providing access to finance or dif different financial interventions. So there are entities that help us to check ourselves and that is what we see there as ADFI, that is um, Development Finance Institutions in Africa, Prudential Standards and Guidelines, and then the SCCI is a, a Global Sustainability Certification uh, Standard to which we subscribe uh, just to make sure that we are doing everything right and everything is going okay in the bank. Um, these are key facts of the bank. We are 115 staff. Um, the bank is now 1.4 trillion in assets. Just two, three years ago, we are only 480. So the bank over the last two, three years has grown threefold, as you can see. And out of those assets, over 1 trillion is in loans. So we have a value of loans out impacting the economy in different, you know, production activities of over one trillion shillings and still growing. So again, in 2019, we only had 355 billion in loans. So um, our chief guest that demonstrates the growth that the bank has registered over the last few years, and I can confirm that that growth trajectory is continuing. So what differentiates us from uh, commercial banks? We are a development finance institution. We focus on impact, jobs, activating people to work, productivity in the economy. Um, our role is uh, counter cyclical as well. Uh, by this, you recall, during the time of COVID, naturally, the commercial banks will not lend because of uncertainty in the business environment, because they are um, risk averse. So that is where, as a policy bank, you recall uh, His Excellency saying, we are going to put money in UDB so that UDB can support the private sector manufacturing. Now, that is a counter-cyclical role. When the other financiers do not provide money in the economy, then your policy bank, like Uganda Development Bank, can come in to do that. We are not profit-minded, but we must run the bank. Um, we must achieve financial sustainability. So we have to balance the development impact um, and uh, financial sustainability. So in our pricing, that is why our pricing is low, only at 12% compared to over 20% on the market. We are not looking to maximize profits because it is not our mandate. And that is the reason we can give loans at a lower price. We do not take deposits. We do not have transactional accounts. For example, you cannot come and say, I want to open an account in UDBL. But when we give you a loan, we shall recover money from you from your bank, wherever you're banking. So we have collection accounts. We have partnerships with all these banks. So it's a very seamless um, process. Uh, we provide patient and affordable capital. Again, that is a, a policy role that UDB is currently doing. Intervention uh, in terms of affordable credit 
high cost of credit, how is government addressing that challenge uh, to activate the private sector to work, uh, capitalize UDB so that we can offer that credit. And patient, in terms of tenure, uh, we give loans up to 15 years. So when the tenure of the loan is long, it becomes easy for a business to pay small amounts for loan recovery while the rest of your money that you make goes either to grow your business or to support your uh, needs as a business person. So uh, that is what we call patient capital. The banks will probably give you loans for three years, five years, we give loans up to 15. When you take a short-term loan, then all the money you're going to make, you're going to use it for, to, to pay, and then you do not have anything. And that is the problem that we have in our credit market because the liquidity which is available is short-term credit, and that is because of the nature of the structure of um, the, 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 the financial sector. Business advisory, we shall be talking about it, so in the interest of time, I will not, but what basically this one means is that we also support businesses. So teach you how to run the business well, so that the businesses do not collapse, so that the businesses can grow, what are good business management practices? So our intervention comes with that support. So our key mandate is really enterprise development. Um, these are the sectors that we support, mainly agriculture. The details will be presented in the next slide. Agriculture, the entire value chain, value addition, agro-processing, and anything in agriculture. For example, these days, I call people, I'm calling upon people to work. If you have anything like a piece of land, that is your capital, start from there. How can you activate that? The bank, for example, if you have some few acres of land, the bank can support you to put their uh, water system, can support you to grow pasture, can support you to buy breeds of animals, and you start working. So why won't someone work if you have any resource, like maybe a piece of land, for yourself. So anything in agriculture, production, value addition, marketing interventions, whatever it is. Um, industry, um, again, we support any interventions linked to uh, the industry value chain. Tourism, because of the economic uh, potential and importance also, in terms of forex and job creation, especially along SMEs that support the tourism value chain. We look at human capital as enabling sectors, health and education, there are specific interventions here. So when you come to the bank, we ask you what is it that you want to do, and then that is how we determine how to structure and whether it, the intervention is within the bank's focus areas. Infrastructure is also an enabling you know, sector. Uh, for example, you cannot run industry without energy, um, you know, ETC, you cannot do irrigation without power, you cannot do, um, you know, cost of production has to come down. So although uh, government does the bulk of infrastructure, there are opportunities where the bank can complement government's efforts and also support the private sector who are involved in um, infrastructure. For example, now we are doing a lot of um, support local contractors to increase uh, or grow their capacity to be able to get some of the jobs that government uh, gives out in the construction industry. Uh, innovation and technology, very emerging sector, and we're looking at opportunities, especially for youth um, employment. We look at cross-cutting issues, climate change, environmental and social governance, SMEs, gender, youth, uh, monitoring and evaluation. So for each of these bullet points, the bank has a specific strategy, specific focus, uh, and dedicated teams to look after them. Um, this is the impact that we have done in 2021. This is um, ex post. So after we lend this money, we go back to say what impact did we create. And we report this in our annual report. Uh, we launched this, we say the 2021 interventions of the bank created 41,000 jobs. Um, the turnover by the businesses was 2.45 uh, trillion. That's your contribution to your GDP. The businesses that we supported were profitable. Uh, they were not losing money, so they made uh, 314 billion in their profits. And then uh, we had forex earnings of um, 405 billion coming into the country. And then these businesses paid tax to government of 84 billion. 
um, in terms of composition, male, female, youth, persons with disability, really inclusion, you know, kinds of aspects, we also consider them as well as um, the gender and social inclusion aspects. So for 2020 highlights to date, I think we're looking at uh, January to September only. We have approved projects worth 797 billion. Uh, these are people who have submitted applications to the bank and the bank has assessed them and approved, like not declined but approved and said we are going to give money. So 797 billion. My honorable MPs are here. They give me only 80 billion in a year. Um, disbursements, now these are the people who have received money in, since January to September alone, we have so far done 557 billion. When I was driving here, I just looked at the numbers as of yesterday, and I think that number is now 580 billion shillings. That is what we have disbursed, like, um, given. So if we give out this money and these projects, you know, are implemented, we shall be adding on or creating 33,000 jobs, uh, contributing taxes of 365 billion, output of 8.9 trillion shillings in terms of production output in the economy and fox forex contribution of 1.9 trillion. Uh, for special programs, the SMEs, women, youth, these are our small borrowers. People have been saying that the bank only lends to big, um, established businesses, but that is not true. So you can see, for example, this product is new. We launched it in December, but since then we have done almost 100 small enterprises. 50 million, 180, 60, 150, 200 million. So um, that is what is coming out of what we call special programs. We call it special programs because we think it is not the usual businesses, but they have peculiar considerations, peculiar circumstances, peculiar needs. So we try to understand what their needs are and try to give the specific solution that they need. Um, business advisory, we have had um, trainings. Barbara was talking about the trainings that we have done. So this is how we start the business advisory program. So for example, from here, we are probably going to get a number of you who may come into our business advisory program get into the training, um, access our incubation services, and be able to come out and be able to access credit. So we have trained over 1,000 enterprises, and I think this is uh, in about three months. It's not even since they are started. Um, yeah, so these are just some of the key achievements that uh, the bank has made. and. Um, we are rated by Fitch. Fitch is an international credit rating agency, and we have a B plus positive rating, which is a similar to government. So these ratings just affirm to lenders, the international community, around how you know your management, um, credit processes are managed. And if you're going to raise funding, say from uh, the market, then they will usually want to have a view that what capacities and capabilities do you have. We achieved the highest sustainability certification rating, and the bank is also the first to be rated uh, globally. Um, I talked about the peer reviews, like our association prudential guidelines. The bank is consistently rated like the best performing BFI, which really means um, we're managing quite well the resources that government has given to us. Um, we have we have stabilized issues around governance, um, staffing, brand reputation, and that is. These are some of the things that we are doing, you know. And um, I think the bank's brand now is uh, getting stronger in the country. And then, of course, financial sustainability. The bank is uh, profitable, making profit. I think we are um, um, the most profitable government um, entity, or perhaps PEPO. Um, and then we compete for awards, like I talked about peer reviews. We keep checking with peers, how well are we doing? So if they are national, uh, for example, financial reporting awards by the National Institute of Certified Public Accountants, we benchmark. And we have been emerging um, winners in, in some of the categories that um, these awards serve. 
So I think that really brings to an end my presentation. I just need to check what's on the last slide. Yeah, the way forward. Um, how can we leverage this event, this business clinic? We have come, um, you may say, yes, we have had this for the first time, but I think the teams have been in the region. We have some businesses in the region. We have engaged a number of um, entities in the region. We have been able to support some of them. But then we thought we'll just, just have an opportunity to engage, you know, everyone or as many people, uh, issues of awareness, that's a, a true concern. So we had to come around and create awareness of what the bank is doing. So it's really to introduce the bank and then to contextualize the business landscape, co-create relevant solutions. Like I gave an example of the solution that we created for the Northern region, uh, given the comparative advantages and opportunities that exist in the region. And then for the region and the business uh, community, it is to s get to know the bank like we are doing now, uh, seek clarification. We have a team of uh, staff here who had our key unit that uh, you know um, you will be working with, you have access to their contacts. We don't have a problem, we go anywhere in the country anytime. So they can come back and be here anytime and camp and yeah, seek clarification. So you'll be able to get to know the team and the contacts. And then uh, let's partner with the bank uh, let's co-create solutions with you, and then let's uh, optimize the potential and the opportunities that are in the region. I thank you for listening. Ikatunga ikadita kaningi noi, bapa esbero na kane polo noi ne langiri noi, nejai. Managing Director na Polon na e Bank. Akiro no ene renge sa nera no e Polo konoi mame par nejul kera ngaje pa na tesuara e biye. Konya koronga i tubu to mauri anut. Ika atunga amuna hariko lakwa psek. Konye ne ise unere ijo idiope otoma tekere na teso na teker. Ay dari sirigilu e tiasinen. Apolo kebera tekere ngine munono noi na e bonote do Idari siri gini lua puga na jok. Wa uri anu te bala napolo nube. E jasi siri gini. A ingadis na api ai. A lo toto jauti siri gini. E topo lo to teso. E topo lo to atekere. Bapa esberu bobo ningesi akani noi noi. Nare mame pata na dumu ni boro kwa ngun. Ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to quickly introduce our leadership that is here. I see the team of the resident district commissioners. Please stand up for recognition. Including the team from the internal security. I see my brother from Ngora, um, an area this week. Thank you very much for coming. We also have a team of the local council leadership. Chairman, LOC fives, all their representatives. Please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to proceed to the next level of our presentations. I'm going to ask humbly Mr. Samuel Edem Maitum to come forward to make a presentation about UDB's financial and non-financial interventions. I'm very sure that he's going to ably do this, and let's pay attention to this. Some of these technical things, we may not be able to interpret them, but we will be able to interact with the team face to face at the time when we go to the business center. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yoga no ikere. Apoyo unubino. Ngome pacho kebate kere. Apoyo unubino. So before I get into um, the meat of this uh, clinic, what is it that UDB can do for you? I would like to ask the team to come forward and quickly introduce themselves and tell you what it is that they do at the bank so that when we speak to a solution from the bank side, you know and you can remember who it is that you have to walk up to. So UDB team, can you quickly come up front and introduce yourselves to, uh, to our hosts? OK. 
Okay, uh, UDB team, please come up front and introduce yourselves as quickly as possible. Good morning once again. Barbara Kasekende, Business Advisory, your best friend. Good morning, everybody. I'm called Were Eriafuna, Head Special Programs. So we shall be interacting from here. We have not come with the money, but we have the money. Uh, good morning, our lovely people of Teso, Karamoja. Uh, I'm Andro Beamukama. Uh, investments officer agriculture. Actually, when I was coming, I saw a lot of variable land in this region. So if you want money to invest in agriculture, primary agriculture and agro processing, I'm here. So we shall work together. So in this region. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name, is, my name is Susan Nangwale. I am the manager equity investments. That simply means that simply means that we can intervene in your project if it is qualifies by taking up a percentage of shareholding among other interventions rather than giving you a loan in which you pay interest. Talk to me afterwards for more details. Good morning. My name is Stella Alou. I work uh, with the managing director as the personal assistant. So if you need an appointment to see her, please get my contacts. Good morning. Joel Serunkuma is my name, investment officer, agriculture. Good morning. Uh, my name is John Kamara. I'm an analyst for, uh, with the equity investments. I'm here to educate you about equity investments. Thank you. Biebo. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Isaac Musembo is my name. I'm uh, with trade and working capital. Uh, for those who intend to import or export, uh, you might need some working capital. We can work with you. Uh, we'll give you more details later. Morning, everyone. I'm um, Erin Anamayanja, Senior Credit Manager. Uh, so when Eria or Andro bring your business deal to the bank, we assess the viability and make a decision whether it's uh, a good one to process. So please, let's uh, talk so that you can make sure that by the time it comes to the bank, it's good to go. Thank you. Ebiaibo. My name is Godfrey Okello, Investment Manager Crop Processing. The president has said, add value to your crops. Do not export it in the raw way. Let's industrialize this country. Thank you. Uh, thank you. My name is Cesar Buti Galdino, monitoring and evaluation officer. I think my title is so strange from all these people. Uh, when they give the money, my role is to come and assess if they are really creating socioeconomic impact. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Victoria Nachmira, Investment Manager Industry. Anyone who is planning to manufacture anything, I'm the person in charge. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Ivan Ksembo is my name. I'm Head Project Preparation. If you have a very good business idea, but it has not yet been very well packaged, if you have an innovative business, but it needs some bit of packaging in order to be able to qualify for any of the facilities that we have spoken about. I'm the person to contact. And uh, later on, as our MD said, we shall be uh, signing our agreement with uh, the National Semi-Arid Resources Research Institute. These are some of the projects that we support. You're, uh, you're welcome to the symposium. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Kakonge, the agriculture manager. Um, I love farmers, and I believe most of us here are farmers. So before you go, let's have a talk. 
to see how you can support your businesses and your farming businesses mainly. Good morning, everyone. I'm Asimira Caroline. I'm Corporate Affairs Officer in charge of look and feel of the brand. Thank you. Good morning. Infrastructure, how do we build our roads, how do we improve our electricity? Again, could you benefit from some advisory services? Because the bank doesn't own the Financial products like debt. Debt really is loans, um, asset finance, uh, trade finance, equity. And on the non financial side, we have solutions like the business accelerator. How do you get it from the bank? What does the bank look at when you come over as an individual? The first part is critical. Who are we dealing with? We need to be able to identify you, so we do what we call KYC, or know your customer. So this basically is where we will ask you, the entity we are dealing with, because we usually deal with a company, 
to bring your constituting documents. The same thing as when you're opening a bank account. You bring your memorandum, articles, or whatever constituting documents you have, whether it's an association, whether it's a uh, single entity or single individual business. You put that together. Are you operating legally? Remember, Professor said it is important that you work within the confines of what government has prepared for you. So do you have your trading licenses? Are you paying tax? Are you catering for your people with the NSSF? Are you catering for your, your um, staff's welfare using NSSF or any of the other uh, requirements, for example? Um, compliance with environmental and such, environmental impact assessment and such. So if those are available in the compliance side, URA, your permits, how have you been performing? Before we can look forward, we need to know what happened in the past. So how have you been performing? Those are the records either you have audited accounts or you have some sort of statements that show how much money your business has been making, whether it is as an individual audited account or if it is um, mobile money for individuals or circle statements. How has your business been performing? So you bring those financial statements, audited accounts, loan statements. How have you been servicing facilities in other banks? Because you know, it is critical to know, first of all, how much you're borrowing, how much debt can your business carry? How much production can you do? Then, depending on the kind of facility you want, how much of your own uh, money have you put into that business? What we call the equity. How much stake do you have in that business? And if you have stake in that business, how much more support are you willing to give that business to help it grow? So that is where the question comes around security. How can you secure, secure your facility by showing how much commitment you as an individual are capable of getting or putting into the business or uh, what other support you're likely to get? Um, so how do you see your business working? How are you going to achieve your dream? What does your vision look like? Yeah, That is the projection, what does the future look like? So you come to us and say, if UTB gave me this machine, I should be able to produce this much more. And when I produce this much more, I am able to sell so much more. And in that process, I can one, pay my loan, I can retain a certain amount to grow myself, to grow the business. And those are the questions we ask you. What are your projections? What does the future look like to you and how does the help from the bank play a role in helping you realize that? Finally, what is your character as a borrower? Fortunately, by uh, now, the law requires that you register with the Credit Reference Bureau. So that is basically going to tell us what kind of person you have been, uh, your character, where you have borrowed, how much you have borrowed, and if you're being good at paying it, or if there are challenges which challenges can be addressed by any of the bank's solutions. In terms of solutions, I don't know, Sumin, if you can help me run through. The different solutions we have, I think Patricia had mentioned, uh, next slide, please. Next. Yes. These are some of the solutions that we have. The term loans, you ha can borrow money for between four to 15 years. In that time, depending on what it is that you're going to do with that money, you can have a grace period of up to three years. Why a grace period? If I'm building a factory, it's going to take me some time for the building to come up. It's going to take me some time to import the machinery. And you have not yet started the production. And that production is critical to service the loan. So we will patiently wait for all this to be done as we support you. And once that is done, you can start servicing your loan over that four to 15 year tenor, depending on the grace period you've been given. So this usually works for heavy investments that have some kind of lead time 
from concept to implementation and deployment. Asset finance. Again, you may have problems with uh, raising adequate security, but there are instances where it is just something like a machine that you need. It is just something like a vehicle that you need to support your business. So if you can raise 20% of the value of that machine, that vehicle, then the bank can finance the 80%. So it doesn't have to be, uh, strictly speaking, a vehicle or a machine. It could be anything you need for production, silos, or anything down the value addition chain. And the bank will finance you up to eight years, provided you can raise at least 20% of that value. Project finance, there may be instances, again, where you need to acquire an asset. Which asset is going to generate cash flows? In this case, you have completely nothing. You maybe have something as simple as an agreement. The agreement says if you can provide power in this quantity for this number of years, government will pay you for capacity. It will pay you for every megawatt you generate. So that kind of project finance, you don't even need to have the initial security, but you have to have your commitment, and the, uh, the repayment of that loan is tagged to the cash flows coming out of that project. So that's something we can look at. Farmer groups we spoke about. If you have a group of people who are feeding into an entity, or if you have a product that you need to um, aggregate, or you need to come together to provide large quantities to say supply another entity, if you're going to supply sorghum, cotton, or something to a bigger business, come together as a farmer group. You can have, have access to your inputs. You can have in access to some pre-cleaning, pre-processing uh, kind of technology through your farmer group where you will guarantee each other yeah, without uh, necessarily depending again on the level of risk providing tangible security. Private equity. If you have a business that is viable in any of the sectors that you are shown in agriculture, in tourism, or in industry, the bank will consider investing in your business as a shareholder up to 25%, and then we can realize that vision over 10 years, up to 10 years, after which the bank can divest to sell that sh those shares either back to you or to other people who are interested to help you raise money to grow your business even further. Trade and working capital, um, Isaac mentioned what that is around. How do you want to facilitate your business? Do you have someone you regularly supply and they're able to vouch for you? Then you can access invoice discounting, for example, to free some cash to enable you to again uh, grow your business further. On the non-financial side, again, project preparation that we have spoken to, business advisory is going to have a whole session with that, with your best friend. Uh, special programs tackling with women and youth, we are going to go into deeper uh, together with the SME solutions. Uh, next slide, please. So on the SME space, what is it that we want to do? How is UDB going to intervene in the SME space? So we have these facilities, the CASI loans for SMEs, where you have a business acceleration facility, we have an asset financing facility, and the SME expansion facility. Minimum on this is 50 million shillings, all the way up to 720. To be eligible, you have to be an SME. You have to have an annual turnover of, up of about 100 million shillings for small, all the way to 350 million per year to be eligible for this. You have to have your equity contribution, again, depending on the facility. How much of your own money are you putting in? And the bank finance is the difference. Grace period for the acceleration facility is three months. For the asset finance is up to two years, again, because we're dealing with equipment to a maximum of six. Then same for the expansion facility. Grace years up to two and uh, up largest turn up to 10 years. Again, pricing. Pricing has been a challenge. How do you access cheap and affordable capital? So these are priced between 10 to 12%. And uh, we'll be able to speak to Mr. Were if you're interested in that uh, particular space. 
the other um, sorry the other issue I think would be to quickly raise on the business accelerator we've noticed there's things like invoice discounting contract financing that uh, can be easily financed asset finance again you're looking at the collateral value a percentage of and then for the expansion you just need to demonstrate capacity and that will be assessed by our team and then the facility can be financed next slide please for the women's side for the women in our community the mothers our sisters there is a potential facility that you can access one if you own a business you're 50 percent owner of that business if you are part of an entity um, shareholding of over 30 percent and senior management in that entity has women over 30 percent even products that you manufacture, are you pro uh, manufacturing products that support women, uh, you'll be accessible. And even by employment, you'll be eligible if you have more than 40% women in your company. So there's a SWIFT facility, which is just to address short-term gaps. If you need a little money, it's like sort of an overdraft. Minimum is 100 million, maximum 900. Uh, again, your contribution should be at least 20%. The tenor is 18 months because we've talked about this being a short working capital facility. So you don't take this to build. This is just to support your business. For the acceleration facility, again, we're looking at startup businesses struggling, businesses struggling to start. You have a small market, but someone has given you an opportunity to increase your sales to them. Minimum 100, maximum 900, up to eight years because you need to put a lot in, in terms of initial investment. Then the asset acquisition to enable women to acquire different assets, whether it's machinery, or whether it is something as basic as land to set up a production facility. Because that has been a challenge. A lot of you can speak to it. So here we have a solution that can potentially resolve that. Uh, next slide, please, Min. For the youth, our country currently has three challenges. One is around economic growth. How do we get back on the track? How can we do that? How do we empower our businesses to enable them to do that? The other is a low tax base. How do we increase the amount of money that government can collect to support projects, to give us the roads we need, the hospitals, the security, and such? So following that, we also have a very large youthful population. Over 75% of us are youths. That is 35 below. And they're struggling with how can they be actively engaged and employed. So we propose a solution that looks at a quick facility that provides working capital for youth who are already engaged in business, uh, who want to engage in export, for example. So there's trade finance. There's also local uh, invoice discounting and other forms of working capital to a maximum of 540 million, minimum is 100. You have to have about 20% of your own contribution in there. Again, the loans are short term, so that's 18 months. We charge a smaller than usual appraisal fee of 0.5% of what you want, and the interest rates, again, are reasonably priced between 10 and 12%. Youth Agro Facility, to encourage our youth to engage in agriculture, productive agriculture. We are blessed with a lot of land, and we might as well use what it is that we have to enable us move to the next step. So this targets agriculture value chain businesses, startups, even existing businesses. Uh, minimum is 100 million, maximum is 540. Your equity stake is about 10% in there. The loans are between one to seven years. A grace period up to two years, and again, minimal fees, minimal interest. Um, next, please. The other, sorry, the other facilities, I think we'll, 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 we'll pick up just for time, but what are the value propositions that we are looking at to address the challenges in the youth, women, and SME space? One is around land survey and titling. We have a lot of land, but most of it we can't use to secure facilities, but also 
to give us the peace of mind and comfort that we need. So the bank will help you with titling, the survey, surveying and titling of land so that you can use it productively, you can secure it, and it, this not only helps empower you as the individual, but you have something you can live on for the next generation to take on and you know, uh, continue to live sustainably. Land purchase, if you need to acquire land, this is one of the other value propositions that we have within. And uh, yeah, once you've identified your plot of land, please approach the bank, a person, and then they can help you in the process of doing this to enable you to access the other facilities that we have spoken to. The application process is very simple. There's a very short form that you need to complete. Once you've completed that form, you will just attach a few other documents, uh, constituting documents for your company, your IDs, national IDs, passports, some photos, statements for three months, uh, either from your bank, SACO, or mobile money, projections, um, again, yeah, projections, some accounts, your credit reference bureau card. If you're not able to get this, you will be helped uh, through, through one of the banks, and a trading license just to demonstrate you are now compliant and ready to access this product. Yeah. Right. So what are the benefits of dealing with UDB? UDB has the lowest cost of funds, as you've seen, between 10 and 12%. This is per annum, not per month. So in a whole year, you're paying 10 to 12%. Compared to the market, which on average is 28, 29%, we are able to give you some sort of affordable credit, grace periods to help you grow your business, to help you learn and, and, and prepare, loan, tenor of loans, 15 years plus, those, there's advantages in how you can service a facility, business advisory, you're not only taking money, but you have the additional benefit of having a business advisory service as well. Project preparation where if there are challenges, if you're not sure, you want to come for a loan, but you're not sure, you have an idea, you have a few things here and there, please come to the bank. There's a team dedicated to helping you prepare your project, making it bankable. You might get some money from us, you might get it from someone else, but this is available for a small fee that is a percentage, half the, between 20 to 50% of the project preparation of feasibility study cost. Project finance approach, like I'd mentioned, we go beyond just looking at lending based on security. How are the cash flows for your business going to be generated? Are they sustainable? And that is a benefit that you have dealing with a development finance institution. Responsiveness, minimum 21 days, if everything is very, uh, very well put together. You remember these are projects that need some time, some thinking, and some review and back and forth. So about 21 days, you should get a response at the minimum. Sometimes it will take longer, depending on what needs to be done. Loans, again, uh, starting from 50 million shillings all the way to about 35 billion shillings, which is what we can give to a single borrower. In other exceptional circumstances, if a project demonstrates a lot of development impact or contribution, then we could consider something in excess of that. Again, to understand um, what happens in some instances if you're not successful, why is it that you might not be successful applying to the bank? Again, what is most critical is information. So if you do not give us complete information, we are not able to make a good decision. And in that instance, we might say no. Other instances are application fraud. If you try to forge documents and things like that, we will immediately disqualify you. So you should be true to yourself. If something is missing, have a discussion and see if there's an alternative. Do not try to make it up. Then inadequate context to business plans, we've seen a few cases where things need to be polished, but that again is why we have the, the team, the business uh, project preparation team, to help you, ref, you know, kind of refine your application if need be. Weak financial risk profile, 
uh, if your business has been making losses and you cannot explain it, and if our intervention is not able to reverse that situation, then we are going to decline it. If you have a weak balance sheet where you're not demonstrating that you can support the level of borrowing that you want, then we might say no or we might ask you to scale down your request or take a phased approach to that. Poor debt service capacity, if you cannot demonstrate that you will be able to pay a debt, you will have to say sorry. You will have to decline that, that uh, particular project. Non-compliance, very important that we are always doing the right thing. UDB has specific sectors it deals with. If you come with an application for a sector outside any of the ones that Patricia spoke to earlier, we will not be able to support you. There are other areas like uh, refinance that we do not do. We do not buy out old debt unless we understand. But even in those instances, it's just by policy, we do not buy out old debt, so we don't do refinancing. Adverse credit history, if you have consistently demonstrated that you can't pay from either a SACO level to a bank level, you know, to a credit reference bureau, it just shows you don't pay back money. Then we can't give you anything. So poor facility and security structures, again, depending on what you bring as security. If it is not adequate, for example, you say, I might have a contract, and you can, you're offering contract financing, but if that contract does not, for example, precisely state terms of payment, frequency of payment, or what is required of you, we might have to decline that, that until either you improve it or we find a workaround. So that's what usually happens in those instances. So where do you apply for these facilities? We have tried to keep up with the 21st century, so you can apply online if you're able to. Those who have projects that are ready can come to our offices in Kampala. Then we also have our teams who have been out in the field. Uh, periodically, they identify a few names, a few entities, and they reach out to you and help you through this process. But we're also hoping that with time, we will have other channels. We are planning to open a regional office or regional outlets. Uh, one has been tagged for Mbale. You will be advised on when that will be opened, just to cater for this re entire region. So rather than spending 50, 100 plus thousand coming all the way to Kampala, you can comfortably move to Mbale for 10, 20,000 shillings and be helped at that point. So I think with that, I thank you very much for that. And I'll ask uh, Barbara, your best friend, to come take you through the business accelerator for sustainable, sorry, for successful entrepreneurship. Thank you. Baba, I see a jacket in one of Kanin. Your very close friend, Barbara, will be with you after break. Konyo chama isi wanyara ono na teka ubu. Waina kona kirongu nini samari, uuriana, uuriana, uuriana. Yalmanoi. Yalmanoi. Attacker Amalan. Okay, um, a director of credit, a bunesi in Neribo Legeregela, a losongai tor or rotolo or summary, or pedro no na genuine. I took Nateso. No so did a bunesi ner, a barebe, Uganda Development Bank, a jazz keda gangat, Nirana Ray, Pedroja Kotognad, a dumuna gangat, Nikamana like a disirigin, Aray, a gangat, Nama Mikamana like a disirigin. Agangat ni kamana na ke disirigini, ni sagangat ni pedoroja bunere, ai lepun, disirigini, ai kopao ni disirigini ni bunja ite aki no kono business. Inyata ebe loan. Na iya reit, pedoroja bunere ai lepun, agangat na disirigini kamana na ke dagwel ineri. Iborne nyara ebe, emusugu tebe shares. Ngine sa nyara ebe equity. Dojo abunere ai lepun, kotoje bank, agwelu nineri, okono business. Or our own bank at da, a shareholder, are they? Are they just getting a job or business will not pay? Agangat ni kamanara kiboro kaluma mi kamanara kadi sirigin. Zagangat ni losi or why lo I topple a business? I ishi shana kin i job a poneli pedro job 
ay topole kon bi asara ay kon business boroli kamara ra keda e management boroli kamara ra keda e recording a e records tena o kon business o pedori joda ay awun documents le laite o bank ara ay nakin fan kere ngunune si ibuto sa dumune be another presentation in losa bunere o ingaren ay todikness boron won kere abu eda direct solim e be obu o uganda development bank e jasi uh, loan in e gele gela e jayi bore nya rebe tam loan e loan lo le loan a pak ke e ne wujanoi e doli i kare to mana kan a pak ne ditenoi e doli e kare do pe ngudu ne si loan in le lo sate ay ngara ke njo a gwelu ni boni ko jo kon business e jasi loan in ja li kamara ra ke da gwelu ay machine ara e jeje be ke de e jasi o ke de factory ko dia gwele chuma Chuma ngoli kodi ya ito som, ayi prosesinga wala hiri ya iboroto maanini. Ibunuja ingo kopaun, siri gwa ngulo bank. Eji ya ibo rde nyate loan li kamana na kede luwa koryok. Lu didida, lu jaso so o grupun, lu cooperatives, arae, jaso so grupun, lu associations. Ngunu kere jasi, pedro sabu nere. Jasi aganga di kamana na kede ingara na kintunga, ayi ten, ayi ipkos projects ke. Arae jasi joke project le pol, koto jwa wanyo ne poli ngara kere jayi temo kinodo. Doja adumun. A, 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 a project proposal li benja yare adumuni kapu unde jasi iboro lo kere e jasi so kede e tente je e jasi i, i staff lo bank bo itanin ara ina it paran lo si adumna pak i dope kedi dope a ilom tomanin doja e jor boni koto jo jasi so ngin a ingarak ne sa ingarak no se every information li buna ingarak in joanin e lama noi papa isi E Baba isi ona chewo kaka narai aina kwa na kirongo my dules. One yo kumam one usingo winyo jame awaka waka. Ame wano miton niangi moro ot kuno itentino. Oyaro udo jama totlo gi ame oyamoikan uh, yore yore. Ladies and gentlemen, we just have a few items before we go out for a break, but allow me at this juncture to invite one of our area members of parliament. I've been guided accordingly. One of the representatives of the board, Onach Senior Council Henry Magino, Abnere Alimokno Akira Dis. Ereja Kait Loda, Esabralo re, eja otungesi kera kane polo noi 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 noi. Eja kaito magi noi tena nji tunga la gueta ne, ibo ngonjo oto mobodi. Ujuka inachana kwenye chie kera inachan boete nera sikede inachike siya anga jepekeche. Yalama noi. Jente sekrole baka imagi noi. Chie chepa ki baka nse sibara we moi tiche yao taibere wone. Mam arangi kukuyeno re. Alomu tongo. Yeah. Um, Alomu tongo. Arabaka. Odudui. Lepe di ene. Neni chote. Eja iswere. Edu nyi kede rota gali. Dereje rota lolo agali. Nyo oja kaikani. Doli jore toma. Ido da. Eka kilori Henry Magino. Ara inge pulida. Totu warita inga okisima. Abu apu gano chamo yao aya guiki nesu obod mamkere patana erasio madi kwenye chama kizuri songa na itangi daka ni kanyu boni akutunga di moki ni esuwe joko bere boni atukoki aririmu ne polo noi anuoni ajiru ne poni liswa me bank do idia utubere sariremu ni mire ba ipupu lolo bondo bemo ya bongo riwe. A boy at a bossery, a boy's nab in a red yawny capuri, swam at a business. A cartoon. A yalama is so abunere. Loda cabella, only you to very casperes and law book, a just law book and a loda cabella. A cartoon are you just king and a law do we darabaca, kid yoko chavo. 
Odomo ya bu ngo ba ya bu chongo da do be sama meu. Ami ti rasa sungi na ite tebre se karet. Konye kidiyo konuka. Um, abu ngo noi noi. Ai ne rakiro be da ari adis i sapa tumunak. Amu chalan. Kide sulu sama ite business sulu didi kidi kimo. A chamuti a bank a gang esu. Nare do tete su arai kamasho bank. E ruta ro yo keki ba ah mami si na risi gina ra mami si tere sa itaji kosi ringi. Kwenye chamuti sa kiro tongi. Ija utubere su arere ungin ikatunga. Akutunga ajala kini bere kuna ra mami le ra ka paran. Abungundo kwenye ngolo pe kaulo oponeka. Amiti irase su. Ite tebere se karet. E puna isi si auto rongo, e kote su, a isi si ana kini duwe, ngese kote bank, mami jala entra muchala na boni, elosi te, kedi koko pura, alosta tan, elosi bongi nda kor, do bongi nga yanga richo roko a society, e ganga kino si kere, ito somati duwe, a nyoto ngo dudu i primary school la nin, a buni konye te sokole, jikari kanyape, a budonga no mono ma inyito taita alusi kwenye makere inuvasa swame ikisila. Mame rai belu wakampala boni swame itiko. Ndudu di primary school da ikeoti kechetunga. Asio mito ngo teso college ne ikari kanyape. Kai kongu ni chuta rapa ya gina buni with east wing a lawyer. A nyalo sena mukaru da nena nyama ya mukaru. Kwenye aja apela ikine. Um, esuli kwa sasa wame business, arere nguna, mamdo nga lose ene rinu ipo. Kwenye, mina sate maribu, dobe de puli daro, mamde jene alo mwauda. Ajene waku mama da, jome pacho, iwinyunu. Angeo lebu kumam, doli ame angeo totwal, angeo lebu me kwa nopi. Ni ami yaro weki ya ngayo, apoyo, apoyo ntotwal. Aso naita ngarere ngeja uno na cheka la Polonika. Alusi longa limu nungina hamu sugun. My elder brother, Captain Honorable Dr. Captain George Michael Mukula. I've been given this privilege and I would like to take the honor and privilege to request you, my elder brother, to come and enlighten this to this audience your precious uh, counsel, which they badly need. I would like to invite you, my brother. Eja kaitilo e topolo uti mwamera ba nyatri ngona cheka bondi. E buja e buli gila aja ite so koleji. Kunese gali gali yonga. Bema mi tiro rete imagino. E alama nwe. E alama. Ata kiari bapa kizuere bo magi na kanyini. Honorable members of parliament, and I recognize here Honorable Jonathan Ebualu, if you'd like to stand up to be recognized. Belo kite kontrunga joke. I also have Honorable Isodo Stella Apolot Ngora, District Woman MP. I have also my sister, Honorable Nakut, Woman Member of Parliament for NAPAC. Honorable Riko is on the way, but we'll receive him when he comes. The board members of uh, Uganda Development Bank, uh, rep uh, I'm here re represented by Magino. You've spoken very well. Nereje Jokonoi. My sister, the managing director of Uganda Development Bank. Amo jalatana itete sina. Ugo virejo anyetu kesijo.
Amuchal to jangole, itete dita kwana kwangen. Konye e titting up pesena ido e jaske da langiru akwana nini tete si. De go ikita tekeroke joko noi. Kota ngai shalamiki nesi anwaya uni e meeting ilo re. Baka sita so ikoni koko ya uni nyo o re. Bapa kisikesa kanin. Members ida swamaka the RDCs or RCCs here if you like to stand up again for recognition all the RDCs and RCCs Yes, thank you very much for coming. The chairman of the districts who are here, if you like to stand up for recognition, are they here? Thank you very much. I also want to recognize the chairman of the National Resistance Movement who are here. I see Honorable Lasso. If you like to stand up the chairman at your levels. I uh, also the other chairpersons who are the other political parties. This is not a political event, it's a business event. So all the distinguished guests. Akotonga Angara Pakina, and I would like to thank you. I have one hour, but I want to give just a few, two or three minutes, one minute each or so, for the members of parliament to greet you because they are your representatives in parliament. And I have here Honorable Ebualu, Jonathan, who is on the Committee on National Economy. That supervises Uganda Development Bank and allocates the resources that you require that you have been able to demonstrate today. Honorable Ebualu, you will come in and also invite your colleagues one by one to make brief remarks, and then I will continue therein. Please. Yoga, the Alama Kera Bunore. A Kotonga Shalamikin in Noi, Esu Kere and Wabunore, the Chief Guest, my father, my teacher, my mentor. The Honorable Dr. Captain Michael Mukula, Akotonga Shalamaki Nijo Ndoi, Anwa Chamunu Abu Nurene. I want to thank the government of Uganda, Uganda Development Bank. This is the first time that you are stepping into this region, Teso. You have never been here for the last 50 years. You have been concentrating in other regions, in central and other areas, but I'm very happy that now you have remembered Teso. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Government of Uganda has put in a lot of money in different intervention, PRDP, NAP, NUSAF, NAD, Emioga, Bonagagawale, PRDP. Now we have uh, uh, the PDM. But our people have remained poor and poorer. What is the problem? That means we have not understood the priorities of our people. Even with all these monies, our people are poor. I want to thank UDB that now you're coming to give our people money. Don't only talk, but give our people money. Here, I was reading somewhere there, you give from 50 million up to 10 million US dollars. Am I correct? Now, my problem is with the, the small farmers, the starters, the people who are struggling, the people we call the poor. Because if we give the 50 million, you will target the already rich. 
you will target the likes of the Mukulas, the likes of the Maginos, the already rich people. What about the poor people from Asuret? The poor people from Katakui? I think we need to look for ways of also giving some little money to these people, the people who are starting. But I got information that you give them in their groups, their association. Thank you very much. I sit on the Committee of National Economy. We approve loans. We gave you 80 billion shillings in the last financial year. Now show us what you have done with the 80 billion shillings. Then you ask for more money. We will give you money as parliament. We have enough money. Sometimes we give people money and they misuse money. But this one here, UDB, I have interest in UDB. Let me declare it. I have interest in UDB. I am going to get a loan from UDB. And you are lucky that the chairman of national economy, Orbali Kojo, comes from Bukedia. I am a member in the committee. You have my brother, the senior counsel. He is uh, somewhere there, well placed in UDB. And you are there. In Nashika, we are going to give you money. We even if there are some areas our people don't meet, God knows why you are there at this time. By the time you live there, leave an impact. May God bless you with humility, Chairman, sir. May I invite my sister, the Honorable Nakud Faith from Napak, Ija. Of your mallet. Atakeri Yoganoi, I want to speak in your language, our language, but you may not understand. You'll think I am speaking in tongues. I am Nakut Faith, the woman MP for Napak. It is an honor being here this morning to, to attend this ceremony where we are discussing business between Teso and Karamoja, the opportunities that are there. I am passionate about the things that unite us as a people. We easily identify with things that divide us. It is a high time that we concentrate on the little that unites us because we will not change who we are. The Iteso, the Karamojongs will forever be relatives. So, there are two things that are critical. One of them is trade which is being addressed in this meeting. The other is culture, the things that unite us. If we concentrate on those two, I am sure we will not be seen as a people who are poor, a region of people that are poor perpetually. We will contribute meaningfully to the growth of our country. We will be seen to be contributing. And so I want to thank the UDB and its partners for making this meeting possible that we are here. Although I am a little guilty, when I sat, I realized there were fewer people from Karamoja and many from Teso. Please stand up if you are from Karamoja. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you have challenged me. You have challenged me. <laughs> but this is a very good sign that we are in this thing together. I request the UDB and its partners to take a follow-up meeting. Since this today won't be enough to discuss everything, let's take the next meeting tomorrow. So then we have these big people, all of them, this big number coming tomorrow so that we, we unpack growth in terms of development, in terms of trade, what we can contribute. Opportunities exist. Livestock trade exists as one of those opportunities. In the seven years when we had peace in Karamoja, our livestock numbers grew enormously because of the trade that existed between Teso 
and Karamoja. We can also target that opportunity. The cereals, we grow a lot of cereals and we sell them to our, our traders in Soroti buy our cereals. The oil seed that Uganda is grappling with, import substitution is possible. When we invest in it, we grow a lot of it in Karamoja, the oil seed, particularly sunflower. Our farmers in Soroti buy the sunflower from Karamoja and also transport it raw. We could look at value addition for that particular seed so that we, our farmers can get value for their seed and grow more. We thank government of Uganda for investing in the Paris development model to target the households at that level so that they increase their agricultural production. I am happy that the UDB is coming up with this special program to target the SMEs so that the SMEs can widen their, 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 their growth and tap into the produce that the farmers at Paris level will produce. It's such a, I, I am hopeful that we will grow. So in terms of solving the puzzle of lack of capital, I think government has gone a long way removing that bottleneck of lack of capital from our people. So I am happy we are on the right path to growth. Thankfully, the UDB is now investing in advisory because lack of capital no longer becomes a challenge at whatever level, right from parish level, small medium enterprises, multinational. We had a little challenge with UDB because their focus was on multinationals and forgetting the local ones. But now with these special programs, we are happy that UDB is here for all of us. <laughs> our job as politicians is to mobilize our people to tap into these opportunities, and we are going to do just that. UDB do not let us down when these people come. Thank you, and I wish you well. I will take back greetings home. Elaman Noi Ija, may I invite my sister, the Honorable Stella Isodo, the woman member of parliament, Ngora Aburam Malanoni, Yalamanoi Nachabunore, Yalamanoi. Our chief guest tonight, thank you for giving us way and for the humility to stand before us. Yoga uh, It's because we've not taken water. Yoga Noi. Yes, those are my names, Stella Isodo, woman member of parliament, Ngora district. I just have uh, one message. I want to appreciate UDB for coming to unite the two regions, Karamoja and Teso. It's a one-off activity, but I also want to encourage UDB to come down. I heard you said you want to make us have a regional office in Imbale, but a farmer in Kobu in Kodike may find difficulty to travel to Mbale. So I think with time, you will really make a region, regional office in Teso and then maybe in Karamoja. Uh, one point that I have is that um, I, I want to remind all of us that the economy of Karamoja and Teso does not depend on crops, but animals. And uh, our chief guest, if you can, please, if you want to clap, you clap very well. Our chief guest, take the message to this government that uh, you are trying to, to compensate, but the compensation is so much fragmented. And so as we wait for government to compensate the animals to these regions, we want to encourage UDB to come and support us in crop production. As a leader of Ngora District, I've started bringing farmers together into a cooperative. And uh, we need support in production and adding value to our crops as we wait for government to compensate our animals. We tried oranges, we tried so many things, but it's not working out because our economy is based on animals. And so, we want UDB to come and support us in those areas. Now crops, because that's what we depend on. We need to identify which crops do very well in our region. 
we support the production, we add value, and I think in such a way we shall benefit. I beg to submit. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Guest and UDB. Allow me an apology from other colleagues, members of parliament. Today we are launching the construction of roads in the city. Honorable Lobo is unable to be here. She is uh, the other side. The Honorable Herbert Ariko had the engagement, but is the way coming. I'm certain he will join us before we close. And then tomorrow we are going to have a major function in Soroti. We are having the coronation of Papa Emoromor, Paul Sande Emolot, tomorrow. Again, we want to thank government very much for investing in a culture. Culture is our identity. So I invite all of you on behalf of other leaders to join us tomorrow at the sports ground, at the coronation. So some of our colleagues are attending that meeting. And after here, we will join them in that meeting. Yala Manoi. Sorry, I sit in the Committee of Agriculture at Parliament and the Committee of Equal Opportunities. And I am the Publicity Secretary and Spokesperson for TESO Parliamentary Group. So, Yala Manoi, UDB, we will support you. You have our maximum support. Already we agreed as TESO Parliamentary Group the other day, we are going to support you to the hint. We will support you. With humility, Chief Guest, Yala Manoi, Papa Chairman, Captain Yala Minango, Yala Manoi, thank you very much. Ibapakisi, members of Parliament, Akanin. Thank you very much, honorable members of parliament. And I would like to, first of all, thank Soroti University of Science and Technology for having given us the venue in which we are going to, and we are holding a very colorful event. We have not had such an event, uh, UDB, for a long time in this region. It is colorful is reflective of what happens in Kampala. The university has made tremendous progress, but it also gives an opportunity for our people to oversee the progress of the university. But I would also want to add that Soroti University of Science and Technology, we have been holding deep consultations, and it has been agreed between the speaker and the Minister of Health Professor Omaswa, who is the chancellor of the university, that since the hospital, Soroti Referral Hospital, uh, is getting smaller, we cannot grow vertically because of the approach path of the runway, of the airport, nor can we grow horizontally. The best approach now is to build a state-of-the-art National Teaching Hospital in this university. <laughs> the Ministry of Health, Minister of Finance is granting that. <clears throat> so I want to just re-echo the fact that since we're going to have here students of medicine and other dispensations of science and technology, this will be a major teaching hospital like Mulago. And this is an opportunity as we transform in the region. The state of the art means that you'll now be able to have an MRI. You'll also have a CT scan, ultra modern, modern diagnostic centers. You'll also eventually have what you call the center for things like cancer and so on and so forth. It will be a game changer for the region. You no longer have to travel to Kampala or to Malago to get this treatment, specialized treatment or India. And I'm also happy to note that the in, in Arapai, they're building a state-of-the-art bank, uh, blood bank. This is a major achievement for the region. <laughs> Money has already been allocated and there is progress uh, in that direction. In coming in, I want to thank UDB. I have 45 minutes now, actually 40 minutes to be exact. 
as you know, I wear several hats. But one of the main hats I want to dwell, dwell on today is the one of business. I subus. My years in parliament, I was able to do the work my people have done. And the good thing is that I hold a master's in business administration. I've been to Harvard Kennedy School of Government. I've done economic and political reform in Harvard. I have a PhD. I've been to the Israeli Military Academy. My experience in the business is vast. And I would like to thank you, the chief executives of UDB, for having given me the opportunity to come here today. I'll be able to give you a few slides later of what I have done and what I'm doing from the time I moved out from active politics, elective politics. Our position now, and I wanted you to pay attention to this very carefully. Government under President Museveni has been able to fundamentally address what you call the bottlenecks of a third world nation. We are pre-industrial. A pre-industrial economy and post-independence economy is one that has gone through many trying positions. And I want you to note that in terms of infrastructure, number one pillar in the infrastructure development of a nation is peace and stability, security. Without security, there's nothing you can talk about. And I want to tell you, capital is very allergic to insecurity. No bank, no investor under FID, foreign direct investment, will put his money or her money in an area that is insecure. But I want to say that the drive towards transforming this country into a modern nation is a journey that has taken sweat and blood to attain what we have today. And what does that mean? Peace and stability in this area has been very absent for many years. In 1987, we watched a war here from the post pre-independence time, you remember, insecurity bedeviled this area. and Karamoja, and no wonder you are now focusing in this area because we have attained peace and stability. Where does it come from? We have had wars here, multiple wars. Konya has been here. We have had UPA here. In 1987, on the 19th of February, at 4 p.m., we moved from Temele here, round the rock, and attack the barracks of Soroti, of uh, NRA at that time. And we were in war for seven years. Many people went into camps. My sister from, Karamoja, from uh, Ngora knows in the areas of Karamoja, I mean in, in Ngora, you had several camps there. When we attained peace, we remained without our traditional and original base of the economy, and that's the cattle. Most of that was swept. Karamoja equally had the same problem. Karamoja, which is about 27, 28,000 square kilometers, the size of Rwanda. Rwanda is 27,400. Karamoja is 28,000, about 300 square kilometers. Karamoja has got 11 ethnic groups. By 1986, Karamoja had 156 graduates, two who were doctors. Karamoja, some of the areas until recently, by 1986, there is um, the group called the IK, my sister, you know it, the IK. 
did not even have a graduate or primary of senior four by 1986. Not even one graduate of senior four. Our colleague, now the member of parliament, who represents the IC, you know, is one of the first graduates to have came, assembled the tools of analysis. So Karamoja and Teso remained backward because Kony was also here. Karamoja had over 80,000 guns estimated, more guns than the guns in Kenya, in the, in the army, police, prisons, and all security organizations. By 1986, Kenya had 25,000 men who were armed in the army. So you can see the insecurity that that caused. So pillar number one is that the regions of Teso and Karamoja, reasonably, Karamoja reasonably, it has not attained full peace, but reasonably, Karamoja is now peaceful. We still have certain dotted areas, certain areas that need to be addressed. But that will not wait for us to transform the region because Karamoja has a lot to offer. And I'll be able to discuss and labor that with you. Karamoja has got gold. Karamoja has got, you know, all the fellows from Tororo come and get the raw materials for cement from Karamoja. But in order to enable the transformation of this area, Karamoja needs electricity. That's infrastructure number two. Electricity, Opuyo substation here has adequate electricity. And I want to say that the movement of electricity from OPA going through Wera, through Katakui, all the way to Moroto has now been attained. We now have electricity. That's a major achievement. The idea is that through UDB and other development finance institutions that you can syndicate with, there is no need to evacuate raw materials from Karamoja to Moroto. Let's create more industries in, Karam in Karamoja, in Moroto, so that our people can get jobs in Moroto, not to export jobs. Because you have got electricity. Third infrastructure is the roads. The road between Soroti, through to where we have passed here, where Katakui up to Moroto has been tarmacked. That's a major achievement. The road between Mbale, lower slopes of Sebei going through Nabilatuk, all, all the way to Moroto is being tarmacked. That again is another plus. And the roads between Moroto to areas that are outlying to the borders between South Sudan and all the way to, Mor to Ethiopia are in the government development program to be tarmacked. So in terms of movement of our raw materials, goods, and services, we have now attained peace, we have attained two, electricity, we have also attained the third fundamental, which is the roads. Telecommunication, infrastructure number four. We now, by 1986, there were 48,000 tele, uh, telephone lines in this country. Because our people forget there is the element of memory lapse. Today we are approaching 28 million telephone lines, both portable, audio, and so on and so forth. This is another fundamental gain in terms of infrastructure. Now, the environment that you need from government, the enabling environment, is based on these four. And the fifth, which is critical, is finance. And that is now what Uganda Development Bank is providing to you as a financial solution. 
if you have these five, the other tool of production is land. Land, you have plenty. You have plenty of land. So you'll find that those who are in the tourism e sector, UDB comes to provide you solutions in terms of service and delivery because jobs are in four, three key areas. One is industry. Two is the service sector. The other third one is tourism. I want therefore to say that all these are present. What do we need to do? And that is why we are here. When you talk about a clinic, Teso Karamoja Business Clinic, we now must do what you call diagnosis. What is the patient? The patient called Teso Karamoja. How do we diagnose the problem? How do we diagnose the problem? The third one is, how do we treat the problem in this clinic? That's why we are here to workshop through this. Number three, what prescriptions do we offer? In your ekinoni to treat this problem. Number four, how do we monitor? That's why the other brother from Arua said he's the CDF. The man from Arua said he's the CDF. Then how do we stabilize the patient? That's why monitoring, evaluation, and following to see that the patient can recover. This is what we're doing in this clinic. Diagnosis, treatment, prescription, monitoring, and stability. This is what the clinic is doing today. So in my keynote address, I want you to understand that Uganda Development Bank is part of what President Museveni and government has put together in order to address the diagnosis, treatment, prescription, monitoring, and stabilizing the patient. And how do we do this? When the member of parliament for Soroti West City, Soroti City West was talking about financing the, the household. As you saw the presentation from UDB, their focus was mainly on SMEs going upwards. But they also talk, uh, talk about our women, our youth. Because the problem that has caused this enabling us to look at diagnosis because that treatment will be made and I'll discuss that later. We have a problem. The problems we face now in the region and in the country, in not only in the country, but the African continent, is poverty, youth unemployment, and ignorance. That's why UDB has come to you to workshop you through financial solutions because of the third problem and challenge we face of ignorance. How do we solve this problem? We are going to focus on key factors. And let me be very brief, honorable members of parliament, for you to note, and senior colleagues. The world has gone through major changes and revolutions. One of the first revolution was the, uh, what you call civilization, write it down, to read and write and acquire the tools of analysis. As your man, you call it now UPE. We call it universal secondary education. That has changed the world. The third major revolution the second major revolution was the agrarian revolution, agriculture, production. When I was in Harvard, this is what we went through, madam. Agrarian revolution. Europe, if you look at Europe, 
Europe by the 12th century was pre-industrial. They were backward, all of them, most of them, 90% to 95% of Europe. Where, where we are, in fact, even lower than where we are. Then they moved to, after the agrarian revolution, to the first revolution of industrial revolution. Because there are four industrial revolutions. The first revolution was critical. And this is very fundamental. And why do you like in Akwaku? And I want to simplify in the Electricity changed the tools of production. And they used at that time coal. I think it was in 1870. No, 17, 17, 1765. Then in 1870, electricity and many of other tools came in. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution, the ICT, internet. I think it is Simunlu. All this now we have, Jataroni. How do we use these tools of analysis to transform our society? These are the questions in us diagnosing the problem. And that's why I've come to give you a keynote address on. In solving this problem, I want to say that UDB has worked very well. And it is rated at B+. Plus. Globally, this in the banking at the same rate with Uganda is a major achievement, and I'd like to thank UDB for that. <laughs> Effective management of financial or fiduciary controls and ensuring that when they get projects, they evaluate them and monitor. UDB in the last seven years has not foreclosed one single company. They help nature, businesses, and grow with them. I want you, therefore, to say that in the last one year, I think you have dispersed 797 billion shillings, and you have initiated 201 projects. This is a great achievement for the country. I want to thank you, DB. And in your focus, I want to say, Ateker, what do we want in Karamoja? What do we want in Teso? How do we address this? The focus is that, as we just in Ekwana, those of you who are deeply here, I want you to have in what we studied in Harvard, what you call a paradigm shift. We have a labor, we have cheap labor. We have the land, we have electricity, we have the roads, you have the telephones, you have the internet. You now have the financial solution. UDB has come in and brought money and walked, through, walked you through their process. In fact, UDB can help you write your business or strategic plan. They can help you write a, a strategic, uh, what you call um, a feasibility study, these people. And at no cost, they will help you to do that, which will be embedded, intertwined, linked to your project development. What you need to do is to bring what they call bankable projects. Bankable projects. And I want you to go back when you have understood, conceptualized, managed your perceptions and been able to sharpen your expectations. And I want to say very clearly, this UDB and the funding has been mainly south of the Nile. 
south of the Nile. This is a fact. We now must address this imbalance. The economic imbalance in terms of industrialization. Our children should not be leaving, Kamp Kamp leaving Karamoja, leaving Teso to look for jobs in Kampala. Less jobs be found here in this region. It is embarrassing for me to take in our young people to be guards in auto security, to guard factories in Kampala when we can equally build factories in Teso. We need a total paradigm shift. And I want to urge government, and I'm going to advocate for it in the other hat I wear as a member of the Central Executive Committee. I want to thank the president for the vision. We now have put an industrial park here in Temele, Arapai. There is another one which has been gazetted, which was Odina Farm in uh, Soroti County. That Odina Farm has been gazetted as an investment park. But I would not want to see in the, an industrial park where only Chinese have 100% monopoly. We must have our own people being industrialists. I take it, let's take this seriously. When I wear the other hat, we should not raise the pol economic political flag only, honorable members of parliament. We must also in Karamoja and Teso raise the economic flag. And this can only not be done by government providing the enabling environment. The president has done his part. It is incumbent upon you now to walk the talk. And that's why the game changer is we have people here who are able and capable. You start slowly. China, there is what you call the tiger countries. China, South Korea by 1962. South Korea was almost at the same GDP with Uganda. Singapore, Madam, you know that. Lee Kuan Yew, the man who transformed the economy of the islands, a fishing village in Singapore, which blo broke away from Malaysia. If you read the books of Lee Kuan Yew, from underdeveloped to the first world, they were at a lower economic base than us in Uganda. We messed up our economy, we messed up our politics, and we created insecurity. Now that we have peace and stability, we have security. We have all the four pillars of governance, parliament, the judiciary, and the executive, all firm and fully pinned down. Let's maximize the capacity for us in Teso to transform this region. We will no longer be, we will no longer be voter banks. We will have the capacity to interrogate those who are coming here with economic policies to say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Nobody will come here and give you salt. In the West now, you cannot go and give somebody salt or sugar. Because some of them have attained the middle class status. Like me, how would you come and give me salt that I vote you for salt or sugar? How would you start? Even money, how would you give me money that you give me 10,000, 20,000? But you know that the reality on the ground this is a fact. But the moment we liberate our people economically by creating opportunities for them, jobs, changing the value chain, I want to tell you, where are my people who could show you so that when you am talking, you don't say that, by the way, you are talking, Balabojo Biei. Is my group there? Could you come in and show, uh, show, show them what I have, some of the things I've done and what we propose? So that when I go back to now, looking at the prescription, I want you to understand 
that I am not just talking, I'm walking the talk. Is, uh, are you there? Can you ignite the man, uh, the digital? Now that we have the digital economy, can you ignite it? Emojong, can you have it on? We have now gone in, and I want to say you, tell you, in Temele here, let's go back to, let's go back first. Yes, that is all right. I have what you call Tesla Industries. If you go there now, you'll see people working very, very hard now as you're talking. Opposite Soroti Fruit Factory. You, uh, first, let's, uh, uh, they have gone to this one. This is what I'm doing in Kampala. We have Madame and UDB. Magino has been there. This is the construction we are undertaking to build the largest fuel tanks storage of 70 million liters in the country. Much bigger than the ones Idi Amin built in Jinja. This is what I'm we are building in Kauku, between Kampala and Entebbe. This investment, if you see that ship named after Kabaka Mutebi, it is 120 meters by 23 meters, longer than Nambole Stadium. There is no stadium here which is equal to that place. This, put on the volume. Is your volume on? Is your volume on? This infrastructure will now be able to carry fuel from Kisumu to Uganda. It takes us 14 hours. This fuel, this ship carries 4.5 million liters, which is approximately what Uganda consumes in a day. We are building two already, and the other four, the other two remaining are about will be ready next year in September. All that was built here. They are, you have gone back again. Emojong, could you? So this was the launch of the ship. We now tanks, these tanks you see, which are behind, carry a total, there are 14 tanks, carry a total of 70 million liters so that we can export those tanks behind there. We can now export to South Sudan, we can export to DRC Congo, we can export to Rwanda and Burundi. They have jumped the point. Let's now go to here. Nara in Kampala, we are doing that. Just hold on where you are. We are doing ships, we are doing fuel. I'm also, Madame Magino has been there. You know it, you have seen there yourself. I've taken you there. We are also manufacturing disposable syringes. And it's going to be the largest disposable syringe plant in Namamve in the sub-Saharan African continent. Over 100 million per month at any given time. Africa is no longer going to import syringes from China, from Germany, from, uh, from India, and so on. We'll now be able to manufacture that here. And we're going to create employment for our people. We are now also doing Viva, Viva. Viva Industries also manufactures soap, disposable, this soap that you use, sanitizers, Corona, we manufacture that. We're also now doing uh, the jig. Jig used to be imported from Kenya. And all those things for toilet, for cleaning, and so on, that those rich people use, we manufacture that here, no longer from Kenya or South Africa. <laughs> I'm also working with the president and government of Uganda. I've moved towards a salt plant which was built by the Germans. And during Idi Amin in 1976, 77, they have, uh, that factory collapsed. But we have taken over that land. I was issued recently with the surface rights. 
I'm now getting the mining. This will be the largest salt plant next to the one of Dangote that he has in Nigeria. This we can do. That's why I'm saying that I don't have to be in government to create, to be dependent on government. I can now be a job creator. Now, here in Teso, I have started the construction of this. This factory here, Teso Foods, will produce Akipi. I've already dug the borehole there. Two boreholes to get mineral water or still water. Nuoka Akipi. We are going to do honey. Mambo Bonilosi, where is that honey thing from India? Jamawa, where is the honey thing from India? If you see honey being imported in the country, I'll show you. I, sh I thought they would have brought here. And bring the Jewish also what we are going to produce. We are going to produce this here. And it will be 20 or 30 times bigger than the factory built by the Koreans in terms of capacity. 150 BPH bottles per hour on each item, meaning that we are going to enjoy the economies of scale, competing with Renzori, competing with the factories of Kampala, and we'll be able to create jobs here, and it is going to be a two hour, a 24 hour production shift. And we may do close to one th nearly 1,000 jobs, 500 during the day, 500 at night, and if you see tomatoes, the women now who are being supported by, remove them and put them here. The women who are being supported by uh, the government fund of 100 million per parish, Iperisa Korenyanya, Emutungulu, Abore, what you call it, Epilipili. Eh? Emulalu. Osata yao na gwelete, jula kilete. You look at, this was made in, made in India, where my brothers and sisters packaged for one group in, in Kampala. This one here. We are going to do exactly the same and create the bottle here. And our people will no longer have to send their honey to Kampala. Guna na gwelane, the honey here. From Karamoja, from Teso, from the neighboring districts, will do exactly an export to countries like Dubai, and so on and so forth. We will now be able to produce, we have already done the sampling, UDB. Here is orange. This is orange. This is passion. I would want you to test it. It is better than one Coca-Cola makes. What is the other one they make? Minat made. Buna na swamlo oka ni oteso. Mete chai tengun. And they are smaller because they are easier to sell. Marketable. Bo kini jabasi, patan jai jai kina tuwana basu, masi olosi. Because it not be like the other one of 1,000. Eh? Nay, two hundred. Oh, well, angari. It is affordable because we now deal. We target our market. You look at this. Eh? Lemon. The oranges which go bad. Lemon. Langirawat. Lemon. This one here. I saw my sister from, from Napak. This will be, she will be my very good customer. Ematunda. <laughs> Passion. Ematunda. Okorio Tematunda. The market will be here. You grow everything you I will buy. Will buy. This is what you call the value addition chain. 
I hope you get my point. The office block is ready. The office block is ready. We are now embarking on the, the other infrastructure. And at the appropriate time, we'll discuss. Possibly if UDB or the other banks want to come in, we'll discuss. Because we are serious about what we're doing. We know exactly what we're doing. Ibo rakoto kwa nongo, nwato toke denu wapapa. LC to initiate, ane, I'm now looking at prescription. I'm now looking at prescription. Ane, nwato to, there are already groups, I saw Madame Chebet here. Where is Madame Chebet? If you like to stand up, you registered some women. Yes? You are a teacher and a very good teacher. Women are very good debt payers. Mama ngore ekureke baja. Mami manye tikilioku. Konyoni manyoni. That's where the capital goes. What am I saying? Eja kaitebu alo. Let the women now form tailoring groups. They qualify for these SMEs where minimum capital is 50 million. This 50 million, if you get sewing machines, you can uh, make all uniforms for all the primary schools in Teso and Karamoja and neighboring districts. Sweaters, you can make that here. You don't have to import from China. I hope you get my point. This, I'm very sure the bank will, will support this. Eh? Set up a company. And they will do a feasibility study for you. And that's why they have that office there. Let's get going. Magino. Ngarakitunga. I'm happy the RCC of Soroti is here. We now have a, work, a place here where you train. Of course, you can you give the RCC to explain a bit about the clinics where young people, but you are being trained along just two, min two minutes from here. The buildings are almost complete. You explain to them the project as it were. Thank you. Then Peter Peck is up. Got his city. I've come late because I was clearing the coronation. And I want to assure the public that the coronation will go on tomorrow without any impediment. Thank you. And you're all invited because we are all attacker. Tomorrow, um, uh, about the what the honorable member of uh, SEC has said, we have an industrial park here in the, that place is also called Pemene, I think, next to the fruit factory. The industrial park has got nine uh, services where the young people and the women can be trained from. They, they are going to be trained in tailoring, carpentry and joinery, um, block cutting, I mean stone cutting, there is leather tanning, there is also bakery, and then mechanics. There are about nine services. And each course, all of them go for six months, and the NRM government will pay all the school fees. So your job as a parent is to send your child there with only the transport. Immediately the child enters the school, there is a mattress, there is a bed sheet, there is a food, and there's training and training materials. So that is what the NRM government has done and is continuing to do. I thought that's all I would explain. When do you want to start this? January 2023. Other industrial hubs have started. We had a delay because uh, the contractor had not installed the equipment. Now the equipment are being installed. We have the list of students already verified per district in Iteso. And we are ready to go come January. Very good. Thank you. I hope you have got that now. Ibo rekwade polo nea ne atumunak, and this is where the youth could do. You can also now go into welding. 
I used to see the president going to Busoga carrying sacks of money. UDB, you will not carry sacks of money. You will now be able to help the young people here. And I'm very sure you will. Welding. You can now get welding workshops and be able to make holes. You can now be able to work um, um, ox plows yourself. You can now be able to make many things using these electricity available and UDB will finance you and the minimum is 50 million shillings. You can now go over, over to even 100 million shillings. UDB will support you. You can do industries like nails. You do what you are here. Tesla nails. You can do Tesla nails. And get equipment from China, India, or Turkey, which are cheaper. Then you can produce this here. This is why the workshop is now here. And we're doing what you call prescription now. Are we together? I'm at the when around. You can now be able to make things like potato chips. Potato chips. You can make sweets, a factory for sweets, and export to South Sudan, and so on and so forth. Some of you who are in uh, hospitality, just get the hotels. You can now expand if you have land. UDB will give you that facility. You can now make soap. Create a factory for soap, the women. You can do that here and you'll make money out of it. You can now be able to do what uh, some of the things that can be fried, bakery. A boy saya on Mugato Kampala. Tip top from ginger. You make a factory here, make a bakery here, and do what you call packaging. Yonja Kavera Boni Temukitane, Bekinja Mugati, and you will sell all the way to all the small shops which are emerging. Amete Chaitanuka. Esikwane Petre Temonokina Mok. You can make shoes for children. You can create a factory which can make school bags for schools. Are we together? Not what I hope you are listening to me. You can now do tailoring shirts from this and create opportunity and make Ugandan make shirts. This is all available. The industrial opportunity you have and I think the next opportunity is to ensure that we move forward. How do we address this? Let us not have our people being needy, sitting down. Did you, Emojong, did you walk us through the project? Each, each one of them. You didn't walk us through the project. The correct oranges, and we will be able to work with the Minister of Agriculture. Ekotorasi yellow katangun. Nara ilutosama ilemona negwekitai. We lose about 70%. You only have only 30% which comes in. But we'll discuss that another time. Cassava. It is a cassava. It is a We are going to make a Hold it there first. Fa don't run a mojong, please. People, let's go to cassava. Cassava there, we can now be able to make what you call medicinal starch. I hope you have heard about it. Ekiangoni liketesi panado comes out from cassava. Medicinal starch, ekiangon, bwekinete kampala, itemokinete kia, liketetunga. They only put what you call the ingredient. But cassava here, medicinal starch, is very, very, very profitable. And we just the ikoriote se muogo, igwe se muogo ngoni kere ofaktorangon, and we make medicinal starch. There is another byproduct, spirit from ethanol. It was some other kiss. Are we together? It was some other kiss. 
spirit ngoni boy kinero ngoni and for production of some of the sanitizers it comes from cassava you also make starch euga ebore a powder ngoni so people have been growing cassava and they don't have a market next year once this factory is complete you bring whatever we have put and we shall buy go behind uh, emojong you have seen emulalu emulalu ngoni chili emulalu o kampala all hotels use them sudan wants them congo wants them drc rwanda wants them etemokise mulalu and the first of his kind temokisa ne oteso amite chaite nuka you can also do and compete and undercut akipping un when the season is low for fruits will sell water and as i said this renzori water here bring me that renzori water the one which has not been opened this is made in kampala let's go back to it and mojong this is made in kampala and they have to transport water all the way from kampala for you here to drink when you can do it at home does that make sense so let's do ours and brand it properly and sell to the market and compete with that in kampala amite chaite nuka let's go back let's go on honey au esikela au you have seen that opportunity there are many people we ejasike de utase sai pita au this now we can do that here and no longer import from other areas we can now export to other countries in the world we now have what you call the value addition amete chaite nuka this is part of what udb is trying to encourage you to do continue emi ebeko kedem nyanya that we can do here mebeko kedem nyanya you can do that here so you create an opportunity for our farmers opatana kesda ito show me do show me do dolto university mambo bi dwe pai kinete ore aile and to bet with the arsenal winning with manu this will now be a solution so that our children can go to school and be competitive with the jobs at the national level and the regional level go on so that is the origin of the product go to the design the, pro, the plant layout the structure is already done as i told you that's the design we have nearly seven acres of land and we have already designed we have a feasibility study we have a cash flow projection we are not new to management of structures we are we have kafuru uh, so my message to you my brothers and sisters today as i conclude and asking udb my request and i want to ask udb this is something that you can do i know that the board has proposed that you set up a regional office in mbale but i would also think that you have what you call a coordinating office in soroti <laughs> if you have a coordinating office in soroti it makes it cheaper and easier and reduces the cost of doing business they come and lodge this office the application here your team there will take it to the regional office they do the evaluation and send it to kampala bring it back and the office will now be able to communicate so that the person doesn't have to jump into a bus all the time into a taxi drive there the cost of doing business will not be ideal bike is office in here it is cheaper for you even if we are to pay as part of the facilitation fees part of it it will contribute number 2 number 2 is that the property when you look at the asset base 
or equity participation when we are talking the language of the bankers. Equity participation, if you have a similar house here and a similar house in Kampala, the value of the property in Kampala of a similar house is 10 times higher depending on the location than the house in Soroti. And yet they are all built in the same way. Can we find a way of mitigating and ensure that projects that are bankable, can we support them by equity bank, by, by UDB coming in to jointly participate for mega projects, which are SMEs, so that we can fast track industrialization in this area. They have ideas, but the problem is the collateral, and if they can be bankable, that's where, from your presentation, we can work, find a way of syndication. Number three is the fast tracking of feasibility studies and business plans. All these people have great ideas. The problem is the fear of writing feasibility studies, especially for women and the youth and those who cannot afford. Can this office here be what you call an entry point, the one in Xoroti? so that that initiative can be done, they'll be able to clerk, they'll be able to address and draw information and help the team fast track the process. The other one that I propose is that I am going to propose to the president and government that if we are to attract investment to this area, industries that are in the industrial park or areas that are segmented that have come into SMEs, let government reduce the tariff of electricity so that the cost of doing business, the cost of electricity is high. These people who are in the rural areas, if you want to fast track the process like China did and these economic tigers and India, the cost of production, electricity, the tariff, government must find a way of subsidy. Honourable members of parliament, this is what we must advocate for, so that the movement and the way our industries are stuck in Kampala, because it's more attractive there, let's attract them by lowering the tariff and government subsidizes, so that the cost of doing business initially rises up and our people can now be able to compete favorably with other manufacturers. The other point is infrastructure. This industrial park here is not complete. Even Odina will have a problem. This is an another area where we need to find Uganda Investment Authority, not only Bank of Uganda, but Uganda Investment Authority should also put a regional office or an office which will cover Karamoja and Teso in Soroti or Karamoja, whichever way you prefer, so that we can now be able to have a one-stop center. We have UDB, we have Uganda Investment Bank, Investment Authority, and now we can have a very transformative approach. Since, bank, since uh, the Ministry of, uh, of Land has regionalized, created a regional office for land here, you can now get a, a land title issued in Soroti quickly. Why do we make the other points also so far away from these points? Since we have acquired the capacity for one tool of uh, production, that is land, finance, and investment should also anchor here. I want to assure you, the people of Karamoja and the people of Teso are very hardworking and very honest people. They will take this money and they will pay it back. On our part, my members of parliament, I think after UDB has gone, let's create what you call an investment, Teso Karamoja Investment Clinic now, or conference, so that we invite all our people and have the policymakers here. Minister of Finance should sit here. The Minister of Energy should sit here. We should also invite all the other organizations of government and members of parliament to attend 
so that the idea is to make Teso also as good as Buganda in terms of investment. Our children should not be walking, and I appeal to you, my dear brothers and sisters, the time has come for us, for the region, to change. We have the capacity. Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, one time when he had Idi Amin, when he attacked Tanzania, he said, wa Tanzania, nyoka imetubamia. Lakini sababu na uwezo ya kumpiga nyoka tunayo. Uwezo ya kumpiga nyoka tunayo. Na nia ya kumpiga nyoka tunayo wa Tanzania tuko na kazi and I want to appeal to you my brothers and sisters from Karamoja tuko na kazi kazi itawezekana we can do this we can do this my brothers and sisters those who you see the Chinese or the Indians doing business they have got the same heads the same legs the same arms they go to the almost similar schools we have the means and capacity to transform our region. Let's change Uganda and integrate our market to the economies of the seven countries which has brought now to the DRC so that the political and economic integration becomes a reality. President Seven has done his part. Let's do our part. May God Almighty, God of Abraham, bless you all. And I want to thank you, DB, once again for your effective presentation. And I'm very proud of you, DB. God bless you. A Papa is the flight captain, Mike Mukula Akanin. I am very sure that Edita can, you know, you guys, you know, joke joke. For many of you who don't know flight captain Mike Mukula, what he has briefly simulated here is what earns him the name. Thank you very much, Captain Mukula, my brother, for that elaborate presentation. I take care. 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 I take a Jalemi Boro Luis Soma de Kesa Neo Teso, Ido, a Kotoskes Adorikinoni, Nulemi Soma de Kesa Neo Teso. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, allow me to invite my brother, the CDF of the Uganda Development Bank, to come and simulate for us and show us each and every little bit of what the bank has been doing here in Teso region. Yalmanoi, Papa is in a second, Koabuni Angesi. Thank you very much, our chief guest and our own lead, <coughs> all our leaders present. I want to assure you that as MD indicated earlier on, we have been organizing these business clinics across the country. But Teso Karamoja Regional Business Clinic is the best of all the regional clinics we have so far organized. And also, we have the best chief guest, who is not only a real businessman, but a very serious businessman. <laughs> and as UDB, you know, we are also very serious people. Therefore, we are going to have serious discussions with him about the opportunities, about the things he has put in the pipeline, and these discussions are going to continue up to tomorrow. This chief guest uh, is one of the easiest and the simplest to access. I think when we were proposing his name, uh, our MD was out of the country, and I was just consulting her. So what do we do? Who is going to be our chief guest? And the name came up. And then I said, now, how am I going to approach him? So I approached our, uh, <coughs> our board member, Director Magino, I said, Magino, we have this situation and so on. Can you be able to approach uh, Honorable Captain Mike Mukula and see if he can come and help us to officiate this? Within 30 minutes, our director, Magino, came back to us and said, General Andama, it is done and it is confirmed. <laughs> 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 
So he's, he also says he's not only going to help us to officiate, but he's going to support us. He has given us the airtime in his radio station. We are able to mobilize and up, uh, get access to all these people who, are, uh, who have attended today. So our leaders, um, in terms of the conference, in terms of the workshop, yes, this is the first time we are here in this region. But we have been supporting projects, businesses in this region. So this year alone, we have so far supported 11 projects worth 50 billion, okay? These projects, yes, yes, honorable, they are there. You may get, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, I, one of your colleagues, Honorable Cosmas Elutu, Elutu, yes, is, is, is not here with us, and you know that he's the MP for Dakabela County, which is just about 10 kilometers away from here. Previously, before the city was created, this was under Dakabela. But he could be here and tell you that, uh, where is the chairman, national economy? I, I don't know where he has gone. That uh, Honorable Elotu is one of the people whose projects have benefited from our support. Now, he also sits in the national economy, in the committee of the national economy, and in the committee of ICT. I'm very sure we now have two PESO MPs in that committee, and they should be able to do for us uh, nice things when we come to them. So we, we have all these projects. I, I, the, the woman MP uh, from Karamoja subregion, you may need to know that we also have projects in Nakapripriti. We have projects in Moroto. We have projects in Bukedia, and so on and so on. So we are with you, but what we want to do is we want to do it better. We want to make sure that next year our impact here and our investments here are very, very, very significant. So just one comment uh, about feasibility studies, uh, especially for women and youth. Our chief guest, that requirement has actually been removed. For women and youth and the SMEs, we just have a very simple template where our people can tell us their story and our, our staff will fill the details. We will only ask for the feasibility studies and the complicated cash flow projections from the investors like you. Okay. So <laughs> our manager special programs will be able to engage with our people and tell you more about that. Uh, the issues of uh, security, of course, uh, the alternatives we have in terms of partnering and taking shares in those businesses are all there. Um, of course, I very, very interested that something in terms of the accessibility has to be done between Soroti and Moroto. We already have businesses here. We are, we are going to look into that. But uh, as you know, we don't just speak but we have to show the real things we have done. So I want to ask the production team, uh, and we have the borrowers actually here, the beneficiaries uh, are here with us. But our chief guest, it is also important for you to note that we already have uh, one or two projects in the Soroti uh, Industrial Park that we are supporting. Uh, much as the park has just been created, but we're already supporting projects in that park. And the beneficiaries are also here. So can I ask the production team, uh, two minutes? Okay, so they, they are setting. Uh, I'll just have to select some few projects that we have done, especially those ones that are small uh, in nature, because people think that we only support very big projects. There's one in Bukedia, which is for a young man. It's a, a skilling um, institution. This young man only stopped in senior four, by the way. But right now he's doing uh, his undergraduate studies. Right now he hasn't arrived because he has a coursework. Yeah? S where and that of Nakapripriti, at Uganda Development Bank, we are committed to empowering communities by supporting projects that unlock excellent economic benefits for Ugandans through job creation, tax contribution, output value, and foreign exchange. 
We seek partnership with projects that drive economic development in Uganda. Hotel Africana Moroto was incorporated and fully registered on 8th April 2015 as a separate legal entity but with affiliation to Hotel Africana in Kampala. HAML project is located 4 kilometers from Moroto Post Office, the central business district of the Karamoja region along Pader Moroto Road. The hotel has a variety of services, namely accommodation, conference and events, restaurant and dining, office and gift shop rental, health club with sauna and steam, business center, laundry, bakery and outside catering. The hotel project is one of its kind in the Karamoja area at a four-star level. On completion of the project, 40 star personnel are expected to be employed on permanent basis. This doesn't put into consideration the external employment opportunities created by the project. A total of 25.4 billion shillings is projected to be contributed in form of tax collections to the national pool over the ten alone. This will attract organizations and investors as they are short of good space with financial services next to them. Uh, my name is Amko Godfrey Chimboa. I'm the general manager of Hotel Africana. I've uh, been uh, in the hotel business for 25 years. I started with Hotel Africana Kampala, but uh, in November 2020, I crossed to Moroto. And that is where I've been for the last coming, coming to two years now. Because on 20th November, we are celebrating our second birthday. Capacity, social and economic impact for all Ugandans are at the heart of what we do at UDB. It is critical to the goal of building a Uganda that works for everyone. UDB is proud to be part of the Hotel Africana story. The bank is focused on financing Ugandan entities that provide accommodation in tourism, development of hotel management, hospitality training, institutions, support purchase of specialized tourist transport facilities, for example, tour vehicles and marine boats. As a result, HAML will contribute 30% of total revenue collections in US dollars, which overall contribute to the US dollar currency pool within the country. Our mission is to improve the quality of life of Ugandans. We have been dealing uh, with the uh, Uganda Development Bank right from Africana Kampala. Uh, they helped us to, during uh, the construction of BMK House. They also extended their, uh, their support to Hotel Africana Moroto. There's a lot that we have helped Moroto. First and foremost, we have uh, employed outside uh, people like suppliers. The local ladies and gentlemen in the market, uh, people who supply us uh, from supermarkets, almost all, all the things that we are using, we are buying them in Moroto. So it is a plus to the community. We employ 30 people, but uh, we add on casuals, those whom we bring in just for a short time to clean and do what. So we can say we are working with about 50 people. So we are still together with the UDB and we really appreciate their support. Join us on this journey today. At Uganda Development Bank, we are committed to empowering communities by supporting projects that unlock excellent economic benefits for Ugandans through job creation, tax contribution, output value, and foreign exchange. We seek partnership with projects that drive economic development in Uganda. Rock Springs Fish Farm Limited is a private company started in 2010 in Tororo, Eastern Uganda, as a tilapia and catfish farming business. Rock Springs Fish Farm Limited was formed for commercial aquaculture production with an aim of exploiting the immense opportunity 
created by the currently wide fish supply demand gap in Uganda and the world at large. Rock Springs Fish Farm Limited is actively involved in both cage and pond fish commercial farming in Buigwe and Toro respectively, specializing in tilapia and catfish. The company has 146 cages in Buigwe district and 68 pounds in Toro district with an estimated annual production of 250 metric tons of fish annually, of which 80% of the fish produced by the farm is exported to East African countries, which brings in foreign exchange earnings for the country and re-emphasizing the bank's commitment to export promotion. The project has a fish hatchery to produce high-quality fingerlings, which are sold to other fish farmers across the country to enhance fish production and productivity at farm level. The development of controlled cage fish farming operations on the lake has significantly reduced overfishing on the lake, thus ability for the lake fish to regenerate, facilitating sustainable fishing and lake preservation. Rock Springs Fish Farm started uh, in 2011 uh, with uh, five ponds, I may say. Uh, by then, our interest was uh, to produce uh, uh, table fish uh, to supply the local community because uh, there was a lot of shortage for protein, fish protein. Uh, in the community, there were a lot of malnourished children and things like that. And then there were a lot of unemployed youths uh, around who were very redundant. So we thought of, uh, we could enter into that and we started with five ponds. Uh, when we went to look for the stocking material, we failed to get. Uh, by then it was mainly uh, Kwa Research and Development Center, Kajansi, that was producing uh, the fingerlings uh, for research and also for selling to, uh, to fish farmers. And then there was Sunfish, sort of the Nile fish farm in Jinja, uh, which was a private fish farm uh, producing fingerlings for their own use and also for sale to uh, fish farmers. B being one single uh, private fish farmer, they were overwhelmed with the, the orders. So we failed to stock our ponds. We quickly changed our objective and said, no, we, we can start with uh, fingerling production. So we changed from uh, producing table fish to producing fingerlings. We started small scale, uh, producing about uh, 100 to 200,000 fingerlings which we used to stock our, our ponds. But eventually we saw we had excess uh, uh, fingerlings and we decided to start marketing to other, uh, other farms. As we did that, the orders in kept on increasing. And uh, we found ourselves also overwhelmed and the ponds were, were, the five ponds we could no longer handle. So we had to do an expansion gradually. What we're doing every time we get some little money, we add a pond also. Uh, eventually the, the five ponds uh, kept on increasing uh, to the extent now we have, uh, uh, we have 68 ponds uh, in total. And these ponds of course they are of various sizes. Now we, we had to align to change our objectives to uh, producing the fingerlings which needed to categorizing the ponds some of the ponds uh, categorized as resting ponds for the brood stock, the parent fish, others for uh, breeding. Uganda that works for everyone. Uganda Development Bank, UDB, is proud to be a part of Rock Springs Fish Farm Limited story. The bank finances the acquisition of more fish nets for making fish cages and purchase of high-quality fish feeds from Brazil, Zambia and Egypt. With a UDB investment, the company increased the number of fish cages from 54 
to 146, contributing to increased annual fish production from 119 metric tons in 2019 to approximately 250 by June 2022. Our mission is to improve the quality of life of Ugandans. We, as we were growing our fish, we started getting stock outs of feed. We'd run out of feed, and sometimes our fish would starve uh, and would not meet our growth cycle okay, immediately. So that's wh when we got in touch with the Uganda Development Bank through, through uh, then uh, an, uh, an organization called Misingi uh, East Africa. We got the first facility in 2019. Uh, uh, and it's running for four years and uh, it really helped us to stabilize our production. That's why uh, around two, two, 2020 we were able to produce about 60 tons, 50-60 tons of feed. Uh, uh, later on again when we added a few cages there was again another big challenge especially with the uh, uh, with the challenge also of COVID. So in 2021, again, we had a very big financial challenge. So again, ran back to UDB, said, no, we, 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 we are again running out of feed. Um, and uh, indeed, they worked quite fast uh, and gave us a second facility. And that's why you see today we are able to produce approximately how many tons of, of fish. We started with three employees only three um, but uh, today 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 we we have 113 employees uh, this has been growing gradually uh, every year when the workload increases we also increase um, the uh, the staff so we sell to all categories of farms smaller holder farms and also large scale older farms. Um, I told you we are now producing about uh, 100 tons of uh, uh, table fish. Uh, our objective right now is to see that we produce in the next five years, we produce between 200 to 300 tons of fish. Hey, hello, hello, yeah, hello, hello. Very grateful to UDB, uh, especially starting way back in uh, in 2019, when we had the biggest challenge of uh, fish feed and, and stock out. Thank you very the, much, the, DJ, the, our the sound engineer. came at the right time and has really given. As we can see, there's a lot that has been happening in the region. But before we get into the detail, I'm going to call the CDF back here again. I've been tipped and reliably informed Ebe. Papa Charles Silas of Goberejo. I've been tipped that you're also one of the beneficiaries. Is that true? CDF, please come and <laughs> we might be thinking that things are coming from far. Yalama. You know, I, I have just stopped the production team. They might think that we just edited these things and shot the video somewhere. So I want to take this opportunity to invite some of the real beneficiaries and come to speak to you and greet you. I want to start with Mr. Charles Elesu. You, you all know that he's the chairperson of NRM in Soroti District and a presidential advisor. So Mr. Elesu, please come and tell our people that we are not very far from you in terms of opportunities. Thank you. Our chief guests all invited guests, their various capacities. You are most welcome. Yoga take care. Yoga take care. Kutonga na rateso. Keda kumama. Kumama uniti enukan. Akutonga limu ne uriaka. Mama akote ne ruipo. Arrayeng o echia manla enarem sina presidential solar divisa konya mereng o na jaring o ne a jaring o ne kwa pa korion a korion kikia sakanin 
Akorio ya zakanin. Akorio. Eso ama inga koru. Eso ama inga business. Ida ge untu nga aso ama business o kwab. Agwela na ramoti. Beke unu to nado rado kita itache. Mamu nga pedo ener na are mama pak. Konya koto nga limu na kerone uriaka. Ebe jase esu kedareren. UDB abu nerene. Konye so ike aramo UDB paka losamo uno kampala. Araya losamo uno UDB o kampala. Age honti nga koru. De project lage honti nga kopane. Nge se project le piti. Imongin, akoto nge piti mongin. Ere nga bere nge gyao nada, jayi du bere nge temono kini boro. Akoto nge piti mongin. Arai, etu tumi mongin. Bulu fateni. Project. Nge sa jayi nga swamu. Oto ma bulu fateni project. Eja si bori uni. Ibore ni sodit. Nge sabari jage temono kida nya inyamat. Le nyameti mongini ngul. Na arai mame rau na choke rai daro togo. Da koro nga geon kedimo ngina kasa kanyare. Anya ibore nisodit. Na yaret aduku netogo. Liboto rimo ngini ngun. Osodi uniet ayaw na kipi. Na are jaike sa nyama. Oma seta kipi. Anepa nen. Oja asi togo. Asabunga lota gwela re projecting ol. Neja UDB. Osodi UDB. Aina kini ngone busa kinta swamu. Ene rango kwa pana da mabere nga eja ikita ikapun. Konye eja sika upu norote. Tengo bala moitu purucho. Imo ina sabiti. Imo ina mukaga. Ne bala samuti nge eja sika upu. Asa loto ngone eja itu ngalu. Opotija utwe project ngol. Ogeta anaki ngone busa kinta swamu. Nada unga swamu kere. Adoketa ina jayi ngo kwa na. Osa le rada adumu nikapun. Ipu puto si kapun, mwangwa ndo wapakota limun, mina tera tupito. Kwa njibo da koto nga limoe naone, kwa pa korioku, no ina korioku. Mambo bawa na kota losa koru na kori yete la papa, yongo papa kame ita ituka choka ituku, erimo reche aloke re. Paka mbongu na bongu. Ibo re, a difference ula jai nge zingesa ara utetunga na donga piti guenu. Kwa njibo da koto nga limoe naone, Konye kwa ne piti na kwa na, imo ngina kaisa kanyare lu, alosu nge daro togo. Tukuruchu sek, aina kini nge nyamat, ada unge pika kini nyamat, aki pejasi ne nabuni nge lato tau, nabuni nge leene. Mina se lea neno, otau na neno. Dabo ngori ngobong, alosu nga anyo ni mongini lu. Mamu nga alosu au pakede. Konye kwa ulo ni lapi wongon, idariji mongini ngun, ogwe larijo. Igwe liji mongini ngul, nepeta ele milion tedio petu, Doja ya daraki nila api wongon, ipedori ya gwela limo ngini nguli milioni yare keda kwa takanyi. Ake polo bare ya sijimo ngini nakaisa kanyare, rafule, aka ulo nila api wongon, eko tiyo dumuta meda ni milioni nakaisa kanyare. Do merebo ni bimo ngini, ipedori ya pita, ipedori ya pita akine, epistori nga akine dangune baka improve the gods. Ipedori ya pita akine, ipedori ya piti pegei, Ipedori je piti takis, ipedori je pita kokore. Ate kerineni kwa neko toa na losi toa maa. Do kwa neko toa je pita kini, pita kini na rasi mpuruvu. Na ara kini ngune pisti ngo, ila api wongon, ora kini ni gwela rijo. Etuwe gel kiti ngeo e dokita lolo besesta. Akina kanya api mile uni uni. Akanya api boni. So ate ker... Ibo rena koto nga aina kine sesi nyiko kini. E bank hange si lo. Kwa nyi bank si lijaro ni ne. A koto nga limo rena kupeta ne. E rako ko ito nga. Ilo si jo bank. De bank e nga laiki njo be. Biko ti isi ni la guri kalicha. Domo ilo si ja anyun. Igwe kine teje interest. 24%. E raja ome aloso bank ha ome richian. Me ra ome resirigin. Ha ome richian e kwa ikina hii. Ochan. Kwenye banka lo, erai 12%. Dei naitenge gure spirit, 
let us make up one year. Again, when I saw make up project, a carriage of a member at a chano, a capoon, the dead donga, a sandy or the governor just saw me do no jazz get the city again. A catunga, a taker, a cotton around the reuni jayoni. Also, the jitty and mammy monikina UDB, a joke of Bumamaka, not ranging like a swam, a more attacking. It has a super ramon as a bit. Eji ni tu ani bore mama kota limo ni luche. Ibu ya to di kini ngojo. Epo ne li swa mata ri tungalu. Dara ina rereng on kwa pateker. Oso dara rereng apese ok. Abunga loto office ke sala le manyu to. Abunga loto office ke kongo ne ke konga ikini ke ke balobo bia. Konya da un ngado to nyara kini ke elon so officer. Bo anyu bari je polo ni ngara. Apese ngin tete singin. Isu nyaya terdo bereng arah kini ngodo fono lo peja. For jede polo pa jahar. Oh, ni kira teso. Asera teke erai na rereng ni jaya oni oni lo karamoja. Yome kane wano tie kede wenyo. Banks ame wano oto ika anegi. Banks yokuo. Piento li omarondi interest aliame indi tuero dongo kede. Abunga lo teli peche bank. Imilo ni to mna kanyi. A backer bay, a son believer, we see on law, the property, a million ticket aquata canyoni, or so the bobo, a losing annual bank, a million to a man on a jazz, salamar a million it, or so the bobo cote interest twenty two per cent for eighteen months, a capital million can kill Kumina aquata, a dollar better bank, a young at a carry million can yaka aquata canyang on, he lifted a million to a man can, you know the younger yo. I take care, Mamma Dakota young and repo. Kes berang upang un. Jo ma ati ayam on jo me kumam. Be bank ati no binoka neni. Ende bank ato atuero konyoa. Piento iyo to kane oyarongali be sente maguri kalicha. Di oto neno interest oyaroketo interest me 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 otariwe ongon. Aracheng mo mo otadek. Iyo to do iyo to be oto udo kony. Yoto omo chan medi chan. Anga oto budi jogi. Aoto imuchala ni iti eda nyarwa. Eko luonga nang ofisa. Bebi nena duong. Imi kitami udoke de konji. Oko mi ni jame mo initwero lobo. Matima. Ame ini duogo ikuno. Jame go bera me ini geo iko. Ami cheko iko jame go. Iko do tima application ni oko chwa ano kono. Amo chwa application. Yogliya gali mi ni sente. E sawa manga tiya ya moke deni. Liya wa wudo sente. Danga yara wudo sente sabita binoni. Danga tiya timo. Kopa make reke de. Pito tuonin. Meringo. I pito tuonin go. I yot. I geo pito lum. I teko pito lum. I ko bino mino gi lum. I pacho. I gina ni yot. I kede pida. I timo pi. Gini sente gon de 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 amakere kede kofa me me lum kofa me 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 kelo pi kofa me wilo tuani de 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 sente go banke no yaromi ni ati so manunga limo tes denbe isiri gini mula balarung bakotunga gueli mongin aswamu na nia aswamu na ya una kipikere isboro kongulu kere si mare ni yolu aina ni isiri gile swamajo mere bejo da jo kisne jai ina kino jo egres video le kare diope. Gia meber ke de jogi o yaromini kare meber ge no timo tichi me me mo akachel iko do ge no chulo nyo chulo sendi udo beri di tie ko udo nyo gimoro li amito wa no kare tatal angoli ameti chini ngi ne do ke ne ke na me ni mito nyo akachie ke da ango angati e piento ango do tichi ngi no no opo inusana eba pa si papa Charles la su akan. Nuinera Papa Charles se la sera beit. Esuli jenete. Ao miso. Nualo sete. Aja oni sirigina boiso nuache. Akoro sa mua ijangari. Angale we polo nela su. Esuli tutos. Mami tutos eso. Ao miso ngunu kwe sengu ni nera ngesi. Yala manoe. Let me call CDF again to come and. Invite for us yet another testimony here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Papa Charles Elasu. Uh, you know, we support 
all the categories of people, all age brackets. Now I want to also invite a young man. Eh? They said the issue of the youth is employment, skills, and so on. But I want to tell you that we have also supported young people in this region. So I want to invite Ochom, Ochom of Bukedea Vocational Skills Training Institute, and tell our people in your language. You can also use both Ateso and Kumamu, like Papa has used. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, UDB. Our chief guests and the rest of the invited guests. Yoga kere. Ipada chama ene ngayi nyala. Amusugun keda ate so nara ya kote nga chama nebe John Teso. Karaide jiche pejo kune pondo sa nelwana. So I will have to mix when I'm uh, sharing. Now, this is the issue of testimony. I'm here to testify the good that UDB has done to us. My name is Cuthbert Ochom. I come from Bukedia. And I'm humbled to share with you the good that UDB has done to us as youth in Bukedia as a district. Well, Bukedia Vocational Skills Training Center was born by an association of youth called Buyopa. Buyopa is a team of youth. They started, but maybe by some misfortune, they didn't have opportunity to, to get jobs. So we decided to come together as a team to form Buyopa. Buyopa is an association that gave birth to Bukedia Vocational Skills Training Center. We started, we started with an idea of skills, skilling youth. And slowly, when we started the idea in 2014, it was not an easy journey. Arayawut, chere chero jai biro no redato ma. Kapi neto ripapa ane, apodatama kisi ariono rakanin, hai jaonu na gangat, aneja i banks no apiete within our communities. But I want to share with you members a polo, a polo, a stress, a pull out and a bunikeda, these small lending institutions. Now, so did in a clear case, Joy Kachakapunu. Konye to allow Munikapunun, but a mamji jotorida. A polo jaw momo, nini parani, moibobo, a beta bunere, a cotosco, I catch. Remember, at the time when they were looking for clients, they were smiling and they wanted. They used all sorts of convincing languages to make you accept to get money from their circle. But after a poti tunga lu julito si raeta iche po nete wakapaki na kamari jo bora kire ni jata rijo. So to share with you ara tiononoi. So since 2014, it was a struggle moving from one place to another. Da para bere renta ni no sukori bere bo ni ni chie kunya kote ngai male deke. Uh, 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 since, we, since 2020, we were able to put a smaller structure. And we've been fidgeting in that smaller structure, a few learning facilities. But last year, I want to summarize it all because we don't have all the time. Last year, actually at the beginning of this year, we got connected to UDB. And I want to share with you, UDB supported us with a fund of 143 million. And uh, with that money, we've been able to put uh, structures, learning classrooms, including equipment, learning equipment. Ngarakisi bobo so equipment ngupongunu anyar eshisha kosomero kosi. UDB is there. And we want to believe we are going to continue moving with them. And indeed, they have pushed us so many steps that I don't know 
where would we, I mean, how long would it take us to reach where they have pushed us now? So in a brief, UDB is real. It is a true angel which is there. UDB, thank you so much. I want to beg to stop from there. And I want to say thank you once again. Baba Isibu Yopa from Bukede Akanin. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is fast spent. We're going to have a brief Q&A. But also, later we'll have a detailed discussion also on the value addition, especially on the grains that we produce here in Teso and Karamoja. One of the sons of the soil, Rodney Mukula, is very passionate about it, and we'll be discussing uh, with you that shortly. Bwana MD, there's also a young man from Teso here who is very passionate about a very organized formal transport industry in the region. I'm very sure he might step into your office one time. Please help him because we want to establish the best ultra-modern bus terminal here in Soroti City. So when you see those proposals, you know those are all brains from the region. Allow me at this juncture to invite a few questions. I know that we've sat for long. We'll soon be breaking off for lunch. I want us to have a few questions from a few people. And let's be brief to the point. My sister Barbara will help me. We'll take the lady first at the back. This is purely weight loss management. Mm? The yes. kilometers I'm going to walk today. Mm? Ladies first. Number one. Can, can I have you rise up, please, so that I can hands see? Hands up. Uh -oh. We can take five for, for a start. I know you're burning to say something. Thank you. Uh, thank you very My, much. Just a minute. My team of rapporteurs, please be on standby. Please proceed. Thank you very much, guests of honor. I just have one question. And the, that question, my name is Amon Margaret. I'm from Threat Women Cooperative Union Limited. Um, I want to say, guests of honor, one thing is that uh, I also support the idea of having a coordination office in Soroti because due to transport and other things, it may not be very easy to be going to Mbale. Secondly, my question is, how long will it take one to process that loan and get it? Because I am aware of some banks Bureaucracy is too long. By the time you get the loan, you're already very tired. Thank you so much. Let me take a gentleman. I've finished this row. Ah, it's ladies asking. I'm loving this region. Yes. All right, let me take another one from the back here. Let me take this gentleman. Take it, take it away, take it away. We'll take five. Your name, where you come from, then straight to the question. Uh, my name is Opio Joseph from Morape Sur Cooperative Savings and Credit Society Limited. Uh, the question uh, goes to the chairman, I mean the guest of honor, and then the MPs who are around here. That, uh, why is it that uh, when you people come to the ground here, you convince us beyond doubt that even the heavens can follow down. Uh, yes, uh, that you promise very nice things on the ground. But when you leave us here, with the, our people down here, with the all good government programs running from Bawana Gagale, Chibi chibi chi up to PDM. Huh? 
you will find that these people who are gathered here have in their eyes not even seen or touched any coin. When you come here, you talk very well about development. But development uh, cannot happen minus the leaders being close to the people. So when you live here, you remove even maybe your cards from your phones. And these people are left with a very wide gap between uh, them and you. How can really these people move a mile away from poverty? I think they will be getting negative-wise. Thank you. As you wind up. So you have to give us the answer. Thank why you. you are doing it this thank you thank you but let's let's keep it brief let's keep it brief so that we can take more shots i'm um, going to move i'm going to move to the front yes I'm going somewhere to in the middle there i'm going to move to the front here i see somebody on the white black uh, uh, white shirt here yeah, that me. hand there oh my name is francis erao I am a diary processor here in Soroti City. But uh, I'm also very grateful that uh, UDBS, UDB has invited us to attend this function. One thing that annoyed me a bit is one of the reasons, in fact, many of the reasons for declining the applications. It is most probable that the people of Uteso may not be able to meet all the criteria needed by UDBS. What is the cheapest way that we benefit from this money? Because it is meant to develop us. Thank you. Thank you very, very good much. Question. Thank you. There was a lady here in the back. I think she raised like 20 fingers. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. First and foremost, I want to appreciate UDB for coming to Teso Subregion. By the names, I am Anya Ujo Helen. I chair Ngora District Farmers Multipurpose Cooperative. Uh, and my focus as a woman representing many women is uh, women and the youth. But what is a bit challenging or oh, what is not clear to me is I am a woman. How do I access these funds from UDB? How do I access it? Uh, what does it require for me to get it? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Let There's a take, gentleman. Let me take one from the front there, yes. which will be the last one. Then we'll do a second set There's of an questions. elder on the red shirt. Yes. Um, we could take one from him before we come this side. There's an elder on the red shirt right over there. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you very much. My name is Francis Epechu. I'm from Katakui, uh, from the Moru Ostrich Farmers Association. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, my first question is, what is the minimum number for a group that is registered to access funding? Taking in or bearing in mind the fact that experience has shown that a group of 30 and above is rather difficult to manage. Therefore, does your criteria fit in the minimum number below 30 people? Two, I have seen you have supported individuals like Pape Lasu. I think he's doing it as an individual farmer. Do you also extend this credit to a nucleus of a family if a family has to apply? Because you know access to a factor of production like land involves a family. Today, women have become very instrumental in accessing and owning uh, 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 factors of production like land. Do you therefore consider families who have jointly accepted to utilize the factor of production like land to benefit and progressively develop? Um, Thank you. Yes, yes, yes please. Please. let's keep it short. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a lady here. We can take just one more before we can additionally get more. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Rita Adupo, and I come from Kapele Biong. Um, I have a question. I've, I'm 
passionate about industrialization and value addition. How can UDB help a woman who, wants, who is interested in setting up industry or factory and she does not necessarily have assets like land? Thank you very much. I think I want to make a rejoinder on that particular one. And it goes to the MD herself. Madam MD, you're from Teso, and you know that the young people in Teso do not have collateral, for example, land, not until their parents die. That's when they will inherit. What do you have for the young people in Teso who don't have collateral like land? You're from here, you're not from heaven. We know what happens here in Teso and Karamoja. You can only get that collateral as land after your parents have died. Please, you'll thank you very much. Let me ask our senior comrades to respond to this. So um, the, the good thing is the MD is your own daughter, is also your own wife, by the way. <laughs> so the question of the regional office has come out uh, consistently. That is going to be for her to, to respond to you. Uh, but a lot of questions on our women are asking how they can access the farm and the farmer groups. Can I invite uh, Mr. Were and Mr. Emoy uh, just to speak to these people briefly? Uh, but you are going to have a breakaway session eh, where we will have a separate session for farmers, separate session for women, and so on. But briefly, these two can come and uh, speak to you in the language. But let me first ask the MD. People want to hear from you. They don't have titles. They don't have land. They don't want to hear from me. I don't know why. But let me first invite you uh, about the regional office and that specific request that you should be the one speaking to them about the orphans, about the people who don't have uh, titles. MD, please. The regional office. <laughs> yes, um, I think the message has come out loud and clear. I have my board represented here. And like uh, we mentioned, the board approved us to open five uh, regional representations. They are not, they're actually not big branches. We have a very simple, lean business model. So even those, whatever we are calling regional branches, will only have three staff for the start. Because our loan process is digitalized, automated, so we can work from anywhere. So if we have to sit as a committee, we don't have to gather. So we have a very simple business model. So even whatever we're calling branches, we'll have like three people. And uh, because it's something that we are starting to roll out, we thought let's start and then with time we'll see how they are being served and then see they need to expand to neighboring regions like Teso, Karamoja, near Mbale or something like that. But um, we'll see, we'll reassess the opportunity and then we'll work together with uh, the leaders. Uh, Honorable Captain Mike has whispered to me some good ideas which I may consider um, and then we'll be getting back um, as far as that is concerned. But that is the exact reason that we looked at because I showed you the numbers. Three, four years ago, the bank was small. Now, with this kind of branding that you see and everyone is getting to appreciate UDB, we're getting a lot of um, interest, businesses. Um, we need to support and cover the entire region. Um, it's not sustainable for these people to move the whole country, you know, every day they're on the road because we must visit every project that we support. So um, that is the justification for starting to be physically present in specific regions so that the regions can be served. It took me 30 minutes to drive from, no, not from Bale, from Komi. 30 minutes from, from Komi to here. You can do another 30 minutes or one hour instead of, uh, you know, driving so many um, hours, for example, to Kampala. So the message is very clear. Um, I promise that we will come back on that. I'm hearing a lot of women say, we are women. As women, 
um, I, I don't like women to feel sorry for themselves. For me, I believe that I'm a woman, but I can do anything that a man can do. So <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm hearing these voices of, uh, you know, we are women. Let's not feel sorry for ourselves, you know. And um, when we're coming up with our value proposition for women, we, we tried. In fact, we were struggling. We struggled a lot. Because people would come and make, you know, propositions and say, women are like this, women they don't have women. I'm like, no, but it's not true. Things have changed. So what exact, what, what is the exact problem and what solution can we offer? And then we said, okay, one thing we know about women is that they are trustworthy, they are more honest, you can depend on them. So what benefit can we give them when we are structuring a project for them? And we actually have a product for women, which is Unfaked Word just because of, you know, we want to give them that benefit of doubt that because they are women, their character is different from men. So um, that women may be happy to note that. So that addresses your issues of we don't have collateral, okay? Um, and, and those other things. We actually have uh, a women facility, which is um, unfectured. Now talking about collateral, and this also speaks to the young people. There are different interventions um, that the bank has put in place. There are different ways of guaranteeing and, and securing what the bank is, for, is, is, is um, giving out. The principle really is there has to be some recourse that in the unlikely event that um, you fail to service a portion, how will the bank recover? So it is not only land and buildings that the bank takes for collateral. When you come and we discuss and we see the need, we have a conversation around what can we do, how can we structure. Um, Captain Mike has talked about the, the project that he's doing and what the opportunity that I see there is many of us linking into that value chain and he's calling upon, for example, women produce tomatoes, bring. So you who is producing tomatoes as a woman, you don't have to worry about collateral because we have an arrangement that we will have between us, the bank, and the one who is buying, Captain Mike, and the farmers who are producing, how we all agree on how to guarantee and protect the interests of each other. So uh, I think that works also for youth and the kind of people who don't have collateral. So that's just one example um, of how we, 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 we structure facilities. So be open to the bank. Just come wholesale the way you are. We shall start to see. We'll try our best. By the time we give up, you will also really appreciate, you will actually pat us on the back and say, guys, you tried, but you has failed. I think that is uh, the, the, the approach um, that we should have. I hope I've answered your questions. Okay, uh, thank you, MD. Um, again, our people will shall have breakaway sessions uh, where you have our manager who looks after women on the enterprises, youth on the enterprises, SMEs will be telling you more details about that. We also have our manager agriculture, uh, MOE will be telling you more details uh, about how we support those farmer groups and so on and so on. But uh, just one small comment. We really, we do not outrightly just decline applications unless unless there is really something fundamentally wrong or related to fraud or something like that in most cases we work with you to correct those areas of deficiency and our best language is that if it is not meeting we try to defer we say you go back and work on this again can you be able to add this can you be able to support this now, what we're also doing together with the advisory services, those areas that you are unable to meet, we shall support you in addressing those areas and so on and so on. We are not here to decline applications just for the sake of declining them, okay? We'll work with you to address some of the challenges that you have that may make your application not to be considered for the first time. Okay, Barbara, you want to take more questions? Yeah. Uh, I think let's take three more questions.
because uh, our time is fast spent, but also I've been guided that if we don't take all the questions, please write your question down in a piece of paper, plus your name and contact. Then the team will follow up with you definitely on that so that we can take as many as possible. Um, can we start from Mose, you wanted to say something? Okay, thank you, son. Okay, for me, let me go direct to the, to the, to the question. I am uh, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Emazu, who is in charge of Operation Wealth Creation in two districts, Kabemaido and Kalaki. So now my question is, my question is going to, uh, to, to the minister. The, it, it, he has already talked about the, uh, about the input, the what and what, but for me, I'm asking about the variety, the, that cassava, which, which he saw that there. Which variety is that? Because now let us, let us grow cassava than waiting this, this money. Thank you very much, Representative of OWC. I think that question is going to Captain Mike Mukula. Yes, please, we have a young man there. Uh, thank you so much. Mine is not a question, but uh, more of an affirmative appeal. John Omogur is my name. I'm a director of Pesa Progressive Academy. Our chief guest and uh, the MD, I want to make an appeal on behalf of uh, Teso region, especially in terms of secondary education. If you recall, when government released the list for the students who were admitted to Soroti University, there was a lot of clamor that there were very few kids from Teso. And a lot was being talked about. But when you look at uh, the central region, one of the reasons as to why the number is high in as far as the government uh, sponsorship is concerned is because of the private schools. The few government schools we have in the region, perhaps uh, talk about the so College and Ngora School, may not be enough to sustain. My request here is that uh, if there would be some affirmative action for private secondary schools in the region. You know, when you, to produce those results that eventually relate to government sponsorship, good grades, there is a lot of infra infrastructure needed. Thank you. But when you look at the guys who are doing the investment in this sector, and as far as the region is concerned, they are really not having the really capacity to put all that. If UDB could come in, maybe we could do something good, thanks. Thank you, thank you. There's a hand this side. Let's take one more there, then we get to the side so that we can get a few comments. See some elder there. Thank you so, so, so much. My name is Igadu John Michael. I am the chairperson of Soroti Disabled Persons Union. Having listened to you, to UD, UDB keenly, they have said the minimum loan one can access is between 100 million to 540 million. Now, for us persons with disabilities who are engaged in small scale businesses like repairing shoes, repairing bicycles, now, if I want to apply for a loan less than the minimum of, four, I mean, 100 million, am I also safe? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's a gentleman there in the white suit. Who take yes, it. we want to just take one because it is if, if there are doctors in the house and they could take us to jail, they would. You have been sitting all day, all morning, and lunch is ready. And that's why we put out breakout sessions. We are still here. We are not going anywhere. So if there are so many other questions, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this audience. We can still meet one on one. Are we together? Please let us not be criminal. Hmm? I know we are hungry, but we also need to move around, exercise, you know. Get off the seat, get some sun. So I will take 
one more question and then we will do the other questions within the other sessions. But ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We are with you. Mm -hmm. Thank All right. you. Where was the other question? Right there, the white suit. We could pick the light. The last question there. I love. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Alem Julius Paul. Uh, I am the National Chairperson Green World Uganda. My question goes straight to the RCC. I have a lot of concern on that. Uh, there is registration already going on vocational something here, just adjacent to our factory here. And he clearly said that they are only waiting for January to come, and there are people registered already. So please, can, can he give us a clear light on how has this registration, and what is the criteria to register more? And I'm happy very much for that, because it will save us more. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love his brand. He looks good, eh? I love his brand. All right. <laughs> I think that's it. The rest, please, let's write the questions. Let's interact. We're still here through the weekend. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to invite Captain Mike Mukula to respond to pertinent questions raised uh, for him before we can call the other team to do so. My brother raised the issue about on cassava. And I wanted to add, first of all, before I rejoin to the cassava. I want you to qualify it in your mind. 12% of this money, 12% of this money is 1% per month. It is much cheaper. It is the cheapest amount of money you can get anywhere in Uganda and East Africa. 1%. Money lenders charge you even up to 20% per month. Even 30. What you pay per month average is what you pay for a whole year. But not even that. UDB gives you a grace period where necessary. Mami Tachi or Daubere Iyeng Nyakapuru for one year. Mamberiji Gia Tachi Kapun. Ogea Berija Twasami Kapun Ogea Dumu Nameda. I hope you get my point. Eda Uneka Redo Pe. Eda Oja Itome a joke. Eda Oja Itome a joke. Eda Oja Itome a joke. Lere Besao. Gedo Oja Itacha Meja. Mamlu imeja ete jo bada luche. Arukito jo chalo. I want you to capture that as in a chan. Nara ikui arukite jo ki di piki pikin. Mami jo torida, mami pera o ruda. Nara ingole sawa ki arikuri ena jo. Dodo bia yi. E barabe ruba ponto si biyani. Uwanjo be etionudu ruba. E rai anda kwa nigeja inganga mame patana. Nga sabala ringo be kote sa iti nkapululu. Ija ote nkapululu. This is a better option. Number two, M. Wogo. M. Wogo lo, every day take care of your netesi, but you got to stash. Oya oja ya unem Wogo. Mamu si ko bay isay kurobale. Oya oja ya unem Wogo. Pimai jek na jikon kapuno lo siyo. Osiyo mati duwe. Ya ya una ya unu boni, tacha kina chija nepa ni pima nepa no yangarete. Da idea kwa na, nare koreo titu nga munare muogo, amisiri. So kwa ni ya uje muogo ngoni, ya patana nare stachilo, kede spirit, 
idumuni soto ma aguela nare. So emama e elo si aneja ijo kedengo. I hope you get my point. Ibo di koto wane kwa nane, ida koto ngate kere kamoto uchita joko. Elsilu e po erasi korioko. Koriete si. Ibo di koto wane koto wanda ngesai subala depari mo. Nara leje, petasi nguna demonu ni kecheboro gwe lana rete, udumune tikapunu, patana ifu mukea kuwano, upatana ifu ati shomi duwe, upatana ifu shomi boro lege tigita. Ema mele mwone mba kia tingoni. I hope you get my point. So kwa na enyanya, eangari ilapi yare uni, otumite nyanya nguna otomatipe. Angor, abonati, a chief executive office ulimo kesebe. Mambo robo bikoto jama me security, bikoto uskesi. Mambo ribo ekini jo be, bo ekini jo, are togo, are nyo. Ije ekini jo, na are pote kesi jente be, eje i, an off taker, otoma, eje market. Ije ekini jo jaa gwelari, ap, akor, i gwelari jo dumune ti kapuno tachariji, e bank, ar ije ekini jo kare lapeo, e lape dope, kameni, e kare dope. Doni chasi ajo, in fact, and I don't think okay, the magina ne. Ebala ke the managing director. Ebala ngesibe SMEs, instead of getting even the interest at twelve percent, they can give you in certain instances katinu ten percent. Eron on any. A meeting like your co meeting loan no no. Iso kwa na, ikapunu kuilu jende tesibu weche, jesibu mwune ya unete luwa puga nwune ya unete. Kwenye luwe patana domoni, yase nga inga ito rungo, inachi kede magino. Be, mambo biti, mambo bilu rete kwa orenge sore. Ofisi, ogeza nepa ni otomatipi, mami nera sinu ipui, dauno ni ore. Oge, titu nga ita soluwa imi. Ha? Yes. Now, akotongo esa pata, aje ngesi. Has he gone out? Rodney. Eje ikwa na oni lui puwe rasi korioko. Eje i, eje a sibo ripereja swamu anuwa iju lakini ira anaoko. And we are talking about, I want you to talk about the issue of cereals and agriculture and commercial agriculture and the synergy between the two. Olimo perejo, you say it. Yoga Atekir. Good afternoon, everyone, all protocol observed. Our chief guest, thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Rodney Mukula. I'm the managing director for Asante Agro and Asante Waste Management. I'm here to talk about grain and pulses, but you can't talk about grain and pulses without talking about agriculture. Because agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Uganda has 48% of East Africa's arable land. It means close to 50% of East Africa's arable land is in Uganda. And Teso Karamoja region is also just as virgin for commercial agriculture. But as you talk about agriculture, Agriculture is different from agribusiness. Agriculture is the ability for you to plant or cultivate, but not commercially harvest what you have actually planted. If agriculture is our backbone, agribusiness is our future. It's important for us to understand what comes out of agriculture and not necessarily grain, but grain and pulses such as soya bean, sorghum, millet, maize, cassava, and other food crops that have been mentioned, and we all know are grown in our region. UDB is therefore a paramount partner moving forward because UDB provides affordable, long-term, low-cost financial supply for both businesses that are large, as well as SMEs. And SMEs include circles and cooperatives that are the predominant 
infrastructure, and backbone for other businesses in Teso, Karamoja, and Uganda. The guest of honor highlighted the fact that 1% per month. Personally, I was not aware that a bank in Uganda can give you a loan at 1%. Because we all know commercial banks, money lenders, are able to give you not less than 9% or 10% per day or per month. That is unheard of. So I would like to thank the management and board of directors of UDB for coming up with this because access to money is important for agriculture and the agribusiness. But above all, for us to move forward and to transit from agriculture, we need to start with four key pillars. One being mindset change. We need to change the way we look at agriculture into agribusiness. Finding solutions to post-harvest handling. Looking at cows not as wealth and dowry, but looking at them as assets that can produce income to sustain households across Teso and the region. Number two, improved financial literacy. Access to money is one thing, but how do you access that money? That's another thing. Those are two different things. Having money and having access to that money. And this also comes in because we lack knowledge and training that creates a huge gap with ignorance. Once we have a mindset change and we have knowledge and we're no longer ignorant about what we can achieve, we can then mechanize agriculture into an agribusiness. We can add value to grain. Case in point, before COVID, I was exporting a lot of sesame, what people call simsim, and shiroko. After COVID, and right before, to China actually, we would come, go to Lamo, go to Katakui, come here to Soroti, and we'd aggregate grain, we'd clean it, we'd take it to, to uh, Kampala, clean it, bag it, put it in containers, and send it to China. And we made some money. But it wasn't sustainable. We did not see growth. We, did, we were just trading. And we were saying, ah, we're in agriculture. There's a huge difference. Lo and behold, we lacked infrastructure. We didn't have silos. We didn't have bulking stations. We didn't know the, 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 the idea that a grain is a living organism. If you expose it to moisture, you will expose it to aflatoxins, and therefore your, your containers can be rejected. So we were forced to come down and say, how do we add value down the line to improve output, to create market for our farmers, but also at the same time to add value to these products. And we figured that's important that we create infrastructure because with the agricultural space, we are able to integrate and industrialize because it gives birth to other sectors in the energy space, food processing, animal feed. As you all know in the news right now, there's a huge debate about the tax on animal feed. And if there's a tax on animal feed, yet we produce most of the grain that's needed for animal feed, why are we importing? It doesn't make sense. Why are we importing? We call ourselves agricultural, and agriculture is the backbone. But 95% of the animal feed comes from Netherlands. So is it really our backbone? It's not. Agri-business should be our future. So I would like to thank UDB because as you focus on agriculture and other supporting sectors, it is in line with your development goals as an institution. And also, this provides employment, particularly to the women and youth. I would suggest and I would request and I would want to re-echo this. Please put a coordination office in Soroti, in Teso. But don't forget our people in Karamoja. They also need a coordination office. It's very expensive, it's very tedious to look for money, and you're spending money to look for money. Let us make it as easy, as, as, as accessible, and above all, paramount for us. This also increases our tax base, but above all, it moves us from the linear economy we are growing, we are selling in the market. We are growing, and we are going to the weekly markets to sell our cows and sell our produce. No, we should look into circular economy. 
so that we are able to close the loop and create value across the chain. This also will create improved infrastructure. This university is a case in point of increased and improved infrastructure, but there's so much more to do. In conclusion, briefly, I'd like to thank the guest of honor, and I'd also like to thank the leadership of Teso and Karmoja, as well as the government of Uganda that has consistently supported. Despite all challenges, you have stuck to the goal and to the vision of achieving Uganda to be a middle income status country, but it starts with the people here. It doesn't start with the people in Kampala, it starts with the people here. I would also like to thank the board of directors and management, as well as the entire team of UDB that stood in front here to express to us and to show us exactly how you can help us. You have put Ugandan first. For me, it's very disheartening because as we speak right now, Uganda does not have a commercial bank. But as UDB, you have come in to fill in that gap and we'd like to thank you so much. On my end, I pledge to come in and support and provide as much experience to the agricultural sector. I've been based heavily in Kampala, but I think it's time I come back to the homeland and add value. <laughs> it doesn't make sense for us to be in Kampala and yet our people have the opportunity to add value to this country and we're not playing a part. It doesn't help for us to have been educated, to have been exposed, and we cannot remove our people from poverty. It's important that we look at each other as partners and as one people, as Atake, so that we can add value and grow our region. Yala Manoi, thank you. Thank you so much, Rodley. A round of applause for Rodley Mukula. Young people are taking over, even if he has more gray, gray hair than me. No, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We have come to the end of the first session. We cannot thank you enough, because I know you're all businessmen and women, for taking the time off to come and spend the whole day with us. And if there's anything I can say as we are closing, there's nothing wrong with getting money. It is okay. You can come and get money. But let money be an enabler in your business, not a lifeline. Enabler. And those are the things that we are going to teach you. So, Rodney, we are definitely going to have a chat, especially when it comes to advisory and helping people discover where their potential is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Lunch is already served. Please, if you have your questions, we are collecting all the papers. So, do not go. Let's have lunch together. Let's network. I think lastly, what I could say, yes, UDB is here. Yes, all your um, government officials are here and the minister and so on and so forth. But remember, charity begins at home. You could have a problem when your neighbor is the one that can solve it. Do you know your neighbor? You don't even know your neighbor. Don't you see? Huh? Your neighbor is here with you. You will talk every day. Barbara, as much, the branch is coming. But for now, I have to go back to Kampala. No. So your neighbor could be the one to help your enterprise. Let's take time to know the people in our region because they might be the ones that will help us grow. And then you come together, you come to UDV, and I can tell you the rest is history. Mm? So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I'll hand over to my husband of the day. Your license has expired as my husband. Yes, thank you so, so much. And to thank all our partners, we have Chemonix in the tent over there. Please make sure you visit. They help us under advisory. So for those people who are looking to have people help them grow, we work with them, especially around value chain and things like that in agriculture. And what is going to happen after this, we will have actually in this tent, we are going to be, um, after lunch, working with with the youth and women, we will meet you in this large tent. In the tent on my right hand side, all the agricultural value, anyone in agriculture, plus myself, business advisory, we shall be in that tent. In the tents on my left, those ones with lovely green, you know, those ones we will have tourists.
tourism, health, education. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not leave when you have not exhausted those areas where you want to grow. We walk this journey with URSB, yes, you need to license your businesses. We walk this journey with URA, yes, we have to pay taxes because when you pay taxes, then we get the money to help your business. So you see, it is a whole circle. Mm? So we work with UNBS, we work with NEMA, so we work with all these entities that help your businesses thrive. So on that juncture, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Barbara Kasekende. I've been your host, but I am also your best friend, so don't leave without knowing who I am. Darling, since you're my husband, over to you. Thank you very much, my embattled wife, for today. Baba is Veroni Ipejo Kakanin. Yalama noi noi, yalama noi noi. Ladies and gentlemen, Ibuno na salaki nine atumunak kede amuchalan. Oga goje itunga lo ejasi aisubisa sek elosete adumuna kiro achi ni dulo kilangi na. Oso di nikamtos lo ejasi tomo sectors kuabina to someroi lo angaleu kede akirono elato arabona tourism ibo eknose suto moga golo epote periodi nikamana ra kera kirongun abunere. Enerke de su. Ngunu nesebeta iso mauna ne akalona ibongunu ni aikam ni nyamata lo akan. Eja si nyamata lo edo litos, ilo toni yoto mo lain, ilo si joda ina paro lain nara nyamata lo eja si edo litos oni kere. Kota isi alamu kina su kere. Apa pulai nu eja si wadikato sa ingi seta kus, ipedoro sa isiki ni o reception ni nani wadika onoto resu. I do not as it went in, Yenelo C. I Jana Papla and Munkede, Ang Setakus, and all of them will be attended too. We want to appreciate you and want to thank you for all the good feedback. Bunna Losengaren, and was still proceeding. Now, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special moment. Allow me to invite the Managing Director of Uganda Development Bank to come and make brief remarks and guide us through the next last brief session. Bapa Isina Polona Kanine Buni. Our chief guest invited Guests, ladies and gentlemen, sunflower is one of the most important oil crops in Uganda, especially in the eastern and northern parts of the country. The socioeconomic importance of sunflower is illustrated by its ability to satisfy the edible oil needs of the country, thus providing a source of income for the farming population. Sunflower production also generates agro-based industrial activities and creates employment. According to data obtained from the Food and Agriculture Organization, the area under sunflower production has increased dramatically from, from, from 52,500 hectares in 1990 to 275,000 hectares in 2020. There are over 110 operational mills in the oil seed hubs in Uganda, with mill installed capacity utilization standing at only 39%. The low level of utilization of the mills is linked to the low level of avail availability of sunflower seeds in the country. Uganda and most, of most East African countries rely on imported seed. The imported seed are very costly and are not readily available. According to 2020 statistics, the country spent up to $1.6 million on importation of sunflower seeds from various countries. The National Semi-Arid Resources Research Institute, located in Serere, has registered significant strides in developing sunflower hybrid seeds locally. Nasari has developed a number of um, sunflower hybrids that require 
field testing and evaluation in order to prove commercial production. So, ladies and gentlemen, can you just give us, the we're just finishing in a few minutes. Can we just listen, please, kindly? Those giving out the gifts, give us some five minutes. We'll give out the gifts when we're done. Thank you. Please this, go ahead, Patricia. This process that is developed indigenously in the country and the seeds provide high hope that local seed production of sunflower can be increased. Moreover, the seeds developed locally have demonstrated oil content above 35%, and the oil content of the seed that we uh, import is between 30 to 40%. And also available local varieties usually provide less than 15% oil content. So that is an innovation. And to foster innovation by Ugandan scientists, UDBL has committed 178 million shillings as project preparation funding to support the Sunflower Research Division of Nasari. The support is aimed at enabling field testing of the developed varieties. The field tests shall be conducted at Serere and on test gardens within the greater eastern and northern Uganda regions. Through this pro project, evaluation and validation of the high yielding locally developed sunflower varieties shall be carried out. Upon conclusion of the evaluation and validation of the outcomes of the exercise, the bank will support the multiplication and distribution of the varieties through provision of cheap, patient, and affordable financing. The financing shall be provided to seed multipliers under the Uganda Oil Seed Producers Association or any other credible entity engaged in sunflower seed multiplication. So that is one of the innovative interventions that the bank, through its project preparation and other structures that we have presented, um, develops to deal with some of the critical needs that we have and addressing some of the challenges from the grassroots. With the success of this project, importation of seed will be history, will be producing locally, and will have adequate seed produced, farmers empowered, and everything else follows. Um, I think the tables that before us will be assigning ceremony of that agreement we have with uh, Nasari and um, Ivan, can you come and get us through? Thank you very much, MD. Uh, once again, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Walter Anyang, who is the head of the Sunflower Research Division at uh, the National Semi-Arid Resources Research Institute. Uh, he's here, and he will be leading the research. He has led the development of the varieties. Dr. Walter, you're welcome to the floor. Please come and uh, take your seat at the high table. Uh, together with him is uh, Mr. Ray Agong, who is the uh, uh, CEO of the Uganda All Seeds Producers Association. So the idea is that once the research is done, uh, Mr. Agong with his organization will now see to it that these seeds reach every corner of the country, so as to alleviate the challenge of the oil seeds. I thank you. Atekere, akironi iswa masi kwa pana, ada onanyara oni piriotini lwa korunga ren, Dr. Walter Anyanga, nepeke de ejakai dre ya gong, Luda Iswamasi Iswamaite Laije Nasari Serere Research Station. Anudwa Aidoka Kani Notomai Tutukete Kiding Nasari Nepepeke de Uganda Development Bank. Anu Uganda Development Bank Agwaiki Ni Sirigin. Tete de Keselo Stingarin. Aisi Tepeon I Choko Lue Sunflower Kedira Niche. Lue Porte Aingaraki Nate Kerno Teso. 
nepe kere kara moja kere Uganda da kere. Ata kere rai ni bore ne polo ne bapa espero na kanin. Nara ichoko ne potu ati okuso nu ikamuto si amamus na uto kera mamus na ichok kera mamus ni boriche inge taknos ngunda ruaru otomokaru le tupakinete. I doka kanin na erai bore ne polo ne. This is a very historic moment for the people of Teso and Karamoja. Raiborene Jokonoi Tumapakana. I take care a cotton a limuna disa and one swang with Tama ete kesi. A gente so e do mutesi chocolate laete. A beninari de suda ayaone, a product le chamuti, a soconi. Do you look at the money chocolate tie? Do you wear I wear? Do you be Mamma made a need do money job? Aganganina, Quane, Losainaini, Igola, a rai and who can say to some science. A science and what do money chocolate laete, Lu Pedrosa say made down. It made out as so a correct dosi chocolate, a coracin as so we corrected. Edumre Edumre sunflower on a jog, a patanai kamun, a rai, a jesu coni. Dodi kapunda imeda uteso, or lomunibo be bankada, I gang it so. Mamerai be rai doka canine, doko da jaline so, a young acido tight, I mam, a jaisai to perso, baby I wo, it do mute sameda, a kirotona koje, doko kisakan. A gangata. Igola, nare liling Igola, I call Igola Ipolo Niso. Limu yo balosong Igola, oh oh. Ilo si ya nyami borolo etarioko. Eto somata, ibore neji ya oni. So ngesa, ay tutukete na. E jabo lai. Akuto na limoke nese, yungo kapala ajo board. E katunga ya jabo lai, Uganda Development Bank. E si meni tabunere, opoto. Mami si pera yaone banka, nilo sa swama one ufisi, lo didi. Nara I can I partner Hakiro Nui Auntie's office when I do look in his shop. If so, I'm a boy a bank alone, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to do that. I can't pull the technology. So, I'm going to do that. So, I'm going to do that. So, I'm going to do that. 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 I'm going to Iso da luko li isi omiti kere na boke ra chok. Iso da kabela na boki sa choko ta ita. Ngi isi omito riso. Ngunu da ebe ite totuwa rido ngunda. Ikatunga na disibele nwa kotonga limune. Nara kotonga esabu wa pupune kapuru. Rachefa kumabu ni wache rero. Kapuna na limu uto rongo. Eyalama ngonwe. Erai kapunu lu ilo se aina ini lu igola. Lu eri saj. I million in a quarter to Kaisa Kanyara and Ukanyoni. A Polone Lazu. A Yapita Miti Luko, the Konya Rigola, Isani Arena Balaso Dultos. Konya Luko around the Paran. A Papa is a team of Igola Kanin, our team of experts. Thank you very much. The district chairman of Serere represented here where Igola is. Please stand up and wave to the people because this is good. You will go and report very well in the district. Yalmanoi, Yalmanoi, my brother Linos Opio. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is fast spent. Can we please rise up for just one stanza of the national anthem and we close this yet for the next session coming in the afternoon? Just one stanza of the national anthem as we stretch, as we prepare for the afternoon sessions. DJ.
Let's uh, remain seated, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. So this is the time we need to take to network. You're going to all have gift hampers. Our ushers will be coming.